You are live. Yeah, we're live. Okay, good. Yeah, just making I sure. I don't want to stress you out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. So uh, we're uh, right before that. We we're talking about NLP. Like, so yeah. you said there was like uh, two definitions of, uh, definitions of NLP. Yeah. So like, just try to like explain that to other people. Like, okay, what exactly so is NLP? I, I will start again from the point uh, we we were at before you went live. Mm -hmm. There are two different explanations for NLP for me at least. One is my way of perceiving NLP and the other one is the official uh, I don't know if it's official but many people use it okay okay so what should I start with uh, I would say start with yours like try okay. to define what is the reason that you want uh, like that you define NLP like how, how that do you do actually that? changed after I started oh, okay. learning NLP but I throughout the say, time uh, what? throughout the time that you have learned NLP yeah. like it changed okay so when I started doing NLP it all seemed very mechanical and very uh, how I would say it, like uh, you do that, that happens. It yeah, like it's like it's like uh, yeah, like there's like a mission, then a result, right? Like yes. there, there's something that you do, exactly. like action, and then a result. Exactly. Okay. So uh, and it's also the way NLP perceives the mind is very mechanical, and th that's at least what I thought at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Very mechanical and systematic. But uh, after a while reading about NLP and also uh, after that when I started to get into spirituality and you know meditation and yeah. uh, awareness it all know, connects for you like you, yes, you really connect connects. both of them I just understood and this is where I get to what is NLP for me NLP for me is just a tool to increase your awareness to become Ooh, okay, more that's aware of yourself because if you know how you're thinking then it makes you more self-reflective, more self-aware, more self... Or even if you know how other person is yeah, thinking. Yeah, how is he thinking? Like, it's going to be more aware of him in that yeah. specific scenario. Okay, so how, how is that, like, uh, uh, different from the official definition of NLP? So the official definition of NLP, I don't know if it's official again, but many people use it, is uh, the modeling of excellence. The so modeling of the excellence. The modeling of okay. excellence. So, for example, if you take someone who's very rich or a famous powerlifter and you want to be like him, okay. what you would have to do at first is to model his action, model his thoughts, model uh, basically everything about it, about him, and try to make a pattern out of it. Once you make, once you make a pattern out of it, you can try and match it to your life. Try to... Uh, follow this pattern. For example, uh, I I would assume that uh, people on that that level won't think to themselves in the mind in their mind, "I'm a loser." Like I like I will go to the gym tomorrow or stuff like that. They have they will have a different set of thoughts. Yeah. They will think differently. They will think uh, things like, "Okay, I'm going to the gym today, no matter what." Like. It doesn't matter if my that body... That was the determination. Are... Yes, exactly. But the determination itself, it's a, a big picture of all... Is the big picture of all those thoughts combined into this yeah, would, would, would you say like that someone like that has like this uh, determination to go to the gym every day, it's something that he got from what? Like what would you think is the reason that he got it? Like, uh, just an example. I think that there could be many reasons. Mm -hmm. I think the strongest one... I might be wrong, but I think the strongest yeah, one your assumption. is like, what having do you think? Um, a goal in life, like a certain goal, it's, I would say, in their perception, is bigger than a goal. It's like a mission. A purpose. I, a purpose. A yeah, why? Right. Yes, exactly. Okay, a why. A why, a why yeah. is the strongest thing a person can have. If you have a why, everything under it, and we can talk about it in more detail, but yeah. everything under it, it will uh, match to the why. Your behavior. Can you repeat that, please? That was that was, that was yes. powerful. I just want to understand so that. Maybe maybe e even the audience. I can like... even go deeper if you want. Uh, I mean, like, please do. Okay, there's something called um, the logical, the the neurological levels. I think something like that. The neurological levels, and it's basically like a pyramid which shows you uh, the what the um, the values what what a person values more, and also. Uh, how how it changes changes based on the other levels. So I'm assuming it's the highest one is like the most important one. Yes, okay. the highest one uh, is the why. Okay, like we said, but uh, it's better to start from the bottom oh, okay, because okay. it's easier to understand. So, for example, the bottom one is the environment. Why the environment? Because it's easiest to change. 
and above that is the behavior. So if you have a, a, a certain behavior you want to change, the easiest way to change it is change the environment. For example, if you want to stop eating chocolate, for example, mm -hmm. if you wouldn't have any chocolate in your house, then you would change the environment. Yeah. You wouldn't have any chocolate in your house. You wouldn't be eating chocolate because you don't have any chocolate. Yeah, environment is also not what is like next to you, but like the people that, uh, exactly, like that exactly. impact you. Yeah, uh, uh, your everything environment in every yeah every definition of environment. environment will be correct for that sentence. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. So basically, the logic behind that is if you change the, your environment enough, your behavior will change. So above behavior, then you have uh, skills. Or we have, yes. Be so it's gonna be behavior and then skills. Yes. So uh, I'm, I'm just trying to imagine the pyramid in my head. Okay, okay. So you have behaviors. Yeah. So above behavior, you have skills. So with enough behavior, you build, you build skills. So if you go to the gym enough, you're, you're starting to know how to go to the gym. Yeah. You build those skills. Uh, it's also the pattern that you build yes, like by and, essentially and by, that, by going every day to the you gym you do in enough time you become better at it and you build skills and it doesn't matter what it is whether it's playing video games there's like this the definition that uh, for if you do 10,000 hours of anything you'll become a master of it exactly. so essentially like you're building your mastery towards any skill that you decide and uh, the more that you do it it's going to be more comfortable for you to do it um, essentially uh, you get used to that and that becomes your new pattern like you, you, you build this like new uh like new patterns inside your day and they exactly, actually inf influence exactly. you and that it that the way it works the neurological levels you can change it bottom up and you can change it top to bottom both way works but it's harder to change top to bottom like than change the why like it's yes, harder to exactly. change the why and then change the pattern but there's some like uh, events in your life that can really cause exactly, that exactly. like uh, like uh, i can tell you from my own experience you know like uh going through something that was very very hard for me and like uh, i call it a snap that's how i call it like some like a, a serious event in your life that was enough for you like you have like a choice right now like, you know about like a uh, 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 fight or flight so essentially you either you're at the flight in that scenario you just give up you know in one way or another it can be losing your life or just losing a certain like event you just give up on it or like fight it you're saying like no i'm, I'm done I'm, I'm gonna have my own voice in in this remember that we watched that uh, uh that movie uh the king's speech yes so cool. in the king's speech he was like I i'm done this is enough this is my voice you know like he said i'm done with this like he was uh, uh going through so many events in his life that was very very like traumatizing and very very like, hard for him to Build cope with up until it it's no, the thing is, I think, I think that in that case... A moment of realization. Yeah, a moment of realization, I think, is actually you getting your why uh, changed. So maybe, I think it is actually... Maybe your top why item. or at least one of the high, uh, high neurological... Yeah, everything. you would say that? You think... Yes. What, what would be like... Like, let's say you're doing it top bottom. Like, you want to one day or like, essentially, you don't really... I don't think you can just want to do that. You need to have some sort of like an event that really like uh, changing something in your subconscious and conscious level... Uh, to actually cause you uh, to reach the level you're like, I'm done right now. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this part of my life. I want to change my why. Or like, not even want to, it just changes, you know? Like, it just happens. Yeah, so I think there are, uh, if you want to simplify it, there are two ways to make progress in your awareness. One of them is, uh, the, I think the Japanese call it Kensho. 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 Okay. So Kensho is basically uh, true hardship. Okay, through hardship. Through okay. hardship. That's through, Kensho through in pain. Japanese. Sorry, sorry. Through pain. Oh, through pain. Through pain, you learn. So going through the gym, gym can be pain, or uh, doing something that's hard every day might be pain. Oh, that like, fits. That fits what I just said, though. Yes, exactly. exactly. But so, the other one, top to bottom, you can call it. Uh, uh, in many um, uh, Eastern traditions, they call it Satori. Satori. So Satori is basically a moment of. Realization. Realization, yes, mm -hmm. deep realization. Whereas something changed in you, but uh, it, it doesn't have to be pain or something like uh, it can be many different things, and for each person, it could be something else. And I think, uh, I think it's a moment when you realize something deep in your mind that was hidden. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Yeah, dude, that's, that sounds insane. So, okay, uh, uh, let's go back to NLP. Let me just check that the stream is actually working and we're actually <laughs> still live. You know, just making sure, okay, everything is good. I'm just making okay, sure, cool. man. <laughs> like, I've never done a stream uh, so for far. Five yeah. hours. Uh, talking uh, talking for, like, for that prolonged time without, like, looking at the stream or checking the chat or stuff like that. So, like, I, I think, like, everybody's like, why is no reading the chat yeah. right now? 
I, I would put a chat right there just to like uh, just it will to confuse me and the thing is maybe in the future but right now we're because honestly sometimes just sometimes they can write stuff like, that's true and we'll, we'll microphone see is not working we'll, we'll 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 see that and uh i mean like maybe at some point we're gonna have our own jamie dude you're <laughs> i'm pretty sure you're the one either you or the other leon oh wow we have to have this conversation about well, how we define leon you and leon, and leon. <laughs> you're the only one who's confused about it. <laughs> no that's not true or Why? not confused how's or... jacob calling you guys leon and leonid i think so really I think so, yeah. Is it really just me, dude? Yeah. I don't know. My <laughs> name is Leon. Just everyone is lion. calling me Leon. So, uh, uh, Lion, it's actually written in the title as well. So, it's Lion Goosen. Uh, yeah, um, Lion Go And, like, okay, so let, let, let's get back to NLP. Yeah, Once sorry. again. So, well, no, no, we, we, it's good. It's good. It's yeah, great. Yeah. We should definitely, like... Uh, we'll uh, talk about li Lions later. Yeah, so, like, uh, NLP, like, okay, so it's, first of all, NLP stands for Neurolingu Neurolinguistic Program. Programming. So that's yeah. that's regarding that. So, like, uh, uh, you were the one that introduced me to NLP. Uh, I don't even remember when. I think it was... Uh, I think when I gave you the book. The one, book? One of the books. You gave me the book, or not from maybe, Richard Bandler. It was from no, someone some, from... Some Israeli. Guy. Yeah, but he was really good, dude. That was yeah. a very... Uh, th that's how you said it. It was a very mechanical book. It was like, yes. hey, do that. That's what's going to happen. It's very practical. And it was very practical. And I have to say, just because of how practical it was and how much it actually helped me being very practical with NLP, I was like very convinced that it just makes sense, you know? And after like I was going into Richard Bandler, like that, uh, one of the creators of the technique and like... Uh, I just understood how he thinks. I was like, oh, I understand what his pattern is. You know, you you talked about like uh, building a pattern uh, from someone like perspective and what he's doing, like going to the gym consistently and stuff like that. And the way that I just looked at it, I was like, okay, that, that guy really understands how to uh, decrypt someone. Because I feel like we're like just a walking passwords, you yes, know? Uh, like we're machines, we're yeah. robots or a code. And, and he just <laughs> learned he just learned how to essentially uh, uh, make it like a good uh, like make a good pattern of understanding how to decrypt most people. Yeah. I wouldn't understand. I wouldn't say that it works on everybody just because everybody's so unique. I would say just one of the tools you can yeah. use to help. Definitely, people. there you go. That but, makes sense. Uh, basically, NLP is something we're all doing. Not everyone is doing NLP in one way or another because NLP is basically just talking about uh, the submodalities of our mind. And I will explain what submodalities is. Submodalities is basically the pictures you see in your mind, the words you tell yourself in your mind, the sounds you hear, the the videos you see, called videos or imagination, yeah. doesn't matter. Basically, the stuff that, uh, that you can actually observe in your mind. These are the submodalities. And some people have big pictures. Some people have small pictures. Some people uh, don't see pictures at all. They just hear sounds. They just talk to themselves. People are, are interacting with themselves in different ways. And uh, by the way they interact with themselves, they are also uh, influencing... Uh, Basically everything in their life, but uh, on a physical level, they are their physiology, their emotions, their uh, their. Uh... Could you could you share like some maybe uh, maybe some tools that could help people to understand uh, what is the concept of NLP? Like we we well, I already talked about it many times in my streams about anchoring and stuff like that. I found it like the most simple to to describe thing because everybody is doing anchoring whether they want it or not, and I think it's one of the most. Uh, practical things that NLP is giving us on top of like obviously there's a lot right that are very very practical stuff in NLP but I think like anchoring is so straightforward approach of just like hey just every time you do that even if you want it or not you're so used to doing that that's our reward system for you and then rewards uh, um, rewards a certain uh, emotion that you have so I just gave them a lot of examples like I gave them the, the one that like I talk about all the time which is essentially when you were a kid uh, and you got like a good grade you get a candy for that right just a global concept I, I don't know if like you specifically but most people do that right you got a good score like your mom or dad are like hey good job here's some candy and then you take that candy and you feel like you got appreciated for that so the candy uh, uh, resembles that so he gets the serotonin and uh, dopamine level going up again and every time he takes that con candy that's why people are feeling more happy when they take it or obviously you it has can take it to the, to another way when you're doing a good job you feel like you're you have to be rewarded for yeah it. exactly that's also true so like that, that is an anchoring that is like, I think like have been done throughout your like uh, growth, you know, like throughout your uh, your childhood yeah. and, some, and throughout your teenage years. And that's something that happens to a lot of people, you know, like your your family and friends will reward you 
uh, for achievements, right? And I feel like we're all like feeling like we're seeking a reward chip for any achievement that we've made. So we'll, that's why we will tell that our friend will like get more likes, we'll get more, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's uh, in that sense, like candies yeah, and stuff they, like the that. The biggest anchoring today is all the uh, likes. The social media. Like social media, social media is a massive anchoring. Yes, it is massive anchoring. It's like, uh, like I, when when I got my dog, like he's not with us anymore. But uh, when when I got my dog, like I remember like just posting a picture about it, and I get like three hundred and fifty likes. And like I'm getting like an average. I'm not that big on social media, um. So I got like one hundred and fifty usually. So I'm like getting three hundred and fifty. I'm like, dude, oh, the reason you guys are clicking like is because you want to reward me for doing something that is like uh, uh conceived as right, right? Like, oh, you adopted a dog. You, yeah. you did something good for humanity. I'm gonna give you a like for and that. Whether you intended to do it or not, yeah. it feels good. When yeah, you that's get true. That's true. Fights, and, uh, yeah, right? you, you want you want to declare that yeah. you got it and you received that. Like you you reached that milestone. And, uh, and you seek that reward chip from other people. So like, it makes sense. So you can even uh, give a simpler example of an earned core anyone knows, which okay. is the sound of message of their Oh, phone. wow, that is a good one. And I just realized a few days ago that I was almost asleep and I heard a message from my phone. Yeah, same. And I just realized something is jumping in my mind and I was like, why do I even react to this? The like, thing is, I, I, to this I, I put my phone on, uh, on vibration like yeah, a long too. time ago just because like, look, there. Okay, and the thing is, you're always going to find another anchor to connect yourself to the cell phone because right now, for example, I will not look for, uh, I'm going to change that too. I need to stop it. But essentially, I will not look at my vibration of the phone anymore because I don't really hear it. So I will look, uh, you know, like the LED light on the cell phone that tells yeah. you if like the blue one is like for that, message, red one, phone and I the, it that's it. So when I'm in like, uh, like interactions with friends, just because we're so intertwined with the phone and like this anchor that like, even if we hear like a ring, uh, we don't want to disturb our friend, but we're going to look at it, right? We're going to look at the phone, see that everything is all right. Um, just because we're so used to it, like we were anchored in so many like uh, uh, depths of levels. Uh, towards our phone, which is like a good example what you gave. So like that is a good anchor. So you can actually reframe it. You can't take the anchor away. I think so. Maybe throughout time. Uh, essentially, can. I am assuming you can, but you it's can, gonna be. But I think more, there is some use to it. You know, yeah, there is some use to I it. I think more easily you could reframe the anchor. So for example, every time you hear the sound of message uh, through your phone, you can remind yourself, for example, uh, breathe deeply or. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Or think about this moment. Like, change your perspective about it, what you should do when you hear it. Oh, I, I see what you mean. That is actually a good idea. It's something that I can definitely involve in my life. That would be easier than trying to fight. Yeah, rather than fighting it, like every time you're going to hear that ringtone or stuff like that, rather than going and rushing for Take your phone. Deep breath. Maybe take a deep breath or maybe like Focus uh, um, on the moment. Yeah, concentrate on the moment or maybe just maybe it should remind you to do something. Maybe like, oh, that's a good one. I, I wouldn't do that. say do 10 push-ups. No, no, but I'll tell like you that. what. Uh, maybe if you want to put yourself a reminder. Uh, you know that uh, um, that concept that like there is like a room in your memory and you can just arrange stuff like uh, put a piece of paper and like imagine like you're inside your mind and you create like uh, I forgot the name of it. And I think you gave me the book about that guy. Uh, I was the guy about memory. Remember? He has like insane memory. Um, you gave it for my birthday. Ah, dude, I forgot his name. Anyways, so he's like creating uh, um, an empty room. Around cats? Maybe, I think it was him. So like he was creating like an empty room uh, and he just put like furniture in it, right? He just really like furnished the house, uh, the room. And he put like all the mem memories that he needed to remember on like a piece of paper, stuff like that on, on the house, in the house. And like, I remember like doing that for a long time. It was a really easy way for me to remember like, uh, don't forget that or don't forget that. But maybe we can even connect that to like ringtones. Or, I like, do that in my mind with not, not ringtones, but notifications. Like, yeah, I, so, like I put a notification for myself and then later I, I'm, I don't do that right now, but I used to do it. Then later I would check the notifications. I would ask myself. So the thing is maybe connect that to a notification that yeah. exists. Like maybe connect that reminder of like, oh, okay, I need to do, uh, I need to do laundry today. And I was like, okay, when I'll hear the next ringtone, That's a good idea. I'll remember that I need to do my laundry or like I need to do the dishes. And they'll be like, oh yeah, before I do that, maybe I'll use that uh, reframing, like you said, 
not only to all the, also like answer that message, but maybe remember something that was also very important to me. Or maybe, as you said, like maybe connecting, like breathing into it or like, uh, I don't know, maybe remember to do things that you have you forgot. Have inf you can have yeah, infinite, infinite amount. amount of anchors. That, and that was a really good way to explain reframing too, man. I think it was yeah. a really, essentially a really good way to explain what reframing is. Yeah. Uh, I'll give an example. You can even simplify anchoring. Anchoring is basically just a thought or emotion attached to something. It could be it could be a, a sense be somewhere you touch. It could be hearing something. It could be thinking something. Some people get anchors just from thinking things in their mind. Mm -hmm. Like you said, like imagining the room. Basically yeah. Basically a bunch of anchors. Anchors is a is a simplified name for all those things. So basically, you can do it with everything. You can anchor. Uh, uh, you can even anchor certain emotions, like like determination, for example. Mm -hmm. If you can remember a time you were you were you were very determined, you can anchor it to a certain thing. It doesn't matter what it is. You can be touching your elbow, something like that. So what, what, what I do, and like something I remember, there was like this concept of making a circle, remember? Uh, how do they call yeah. it? A circle of uh, strength? Um, no, it was a circle of, I don't recall it, but it was another anchoring uh, idea that like you, you create like a, a, a yeah, circle I inside your mind. Yeah, I know what you're mind. talking about. Let's call it the circle of energy, just for that yeah, case. I think I don't, the name. I think no. it was something like that. So, yeah. Circle of energy, so you create a circle. It doesn't like, matter what Yeah, yeah, mean. whatever. Like I'm just giving for that example yeah. for the chat to understand like what I'm talking about. So like you create a circle inside your mind and you stand on it. And you imagine like, okay, every time I'm gonna be inside that circle, and you believe it obviously, uh, every time you're gonna be inside that circle, uh, you're gonna feel energy. And like, I remember doing it, uh, I would do it like in the entrance to the gym, to fitness land. I would like uh, create a circle right at the entrance. And I would remember like every time I had like uh, negative energy, I would go away from it and re-energize myself and only then get inside of it. And like, you, I feel like I charged it with time. And then like, it, it, I really believed it at some point. Like I would stand on that circle and I don't need to get ready with stuff. I just stand on it. I'm like, whoa. I have that's, so much energy. Exactly Another one would be the necklace. I don't know if you recall yeah, that, but I had like a necklace that like um you I would as an, as an anchor. I yeah, that. it was a very strong anchor for me, and now I don't need it anymore. But like uh, every time I needed it, I would just hold it, and I remember just getting a lot of strength from just holding it and recalling uh, a certain like powerlifting event that I was in, and just give me so much strength, hearing everybody like cheering, and the moment was just very powerful. You know, like I remember like, just going to the weights. And it was just so like energized and determined and like I recall that moment, you know, like I'm getting like goosebumps just from thinking <laughs> about it. That just that is a good anchor, you know? Yeah. Like you just hold it and just like you remember that moment and that just really ignites you. So I will tell you something crazy. You don't even have to believe it. Yeah. It's enough that you remember a certain feeling and you can recall this feeling in your body. If you can do it, you can anchor it. You don't even have to believe it. And we all have anchors that we are not even conscious of. So one of them might be the ringtone of the phone. So me and you are conscious, of it, but many people are not. Yeah. But when you see someone is like when you're in the line uh, at the bank and you hear uh, a sound of a message, phone message, you will see everyone just looking around and looking at their phone. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Every, everyone is ra like, wait, reacting is it mine? to the sound. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So this is funny. They're not really aware of how much it affects them or even if they do it still affects them it that's, that's a good example yeah and it happens a lot man like i even remember like we were sitting here and i i don't like to have anything like by the way he's one of my friends so he <laughs> just for the mention uh one of my close friends so essentially i remember just us just chilling in here like someone just forgets to uh keep the phone on like so he keeps the he keeps the phone on and like you hear the sound so even if you, it's not your sound or anything related to you everybody will check their phone just to make sure they didn't get one as well that's true you know what i mean like even if they don't hear anything that is related to them they will just hear that ringtone and be like oh, okay i, I have to check as something well. crazier even if everyone is looking at the tv we're, we're watching a movie and there was a, uh, a phone message in the movie and everyone knows that the phone wow. message was in the movie. That's crazy. It will still remind you to check your phone. That is insane. That, yeah. that is a deep and rooted uh, anchor indeed. Yes. Exactly. And that is, I, I don't know if I like it. I like, I understand the importance of having a phone and being uh, um, uh, online all the time and being very approachable to other people. But I feel like it's some sort of like a brainwash that we mm. accept it as human yeah, beings. Uh, that's basically what's branding build off. Like 
That's what they I, mean. I don't want to talk about no, you, all those big corporations. Oh, but feel free. It's, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, right, you, so you can like definitely do that all the time. And yeah. Looking mm -hmm. at all those symbols, symbols of Coca-Cola, McDonald's, all those big things, what they're trying to do is anchor that to you. Like, what's the, the motto of, uh, like, if I tell you, just do it. What, what are you uh, thinking Nike. about? Nike. Nike. Exactly. Yeah. They try to Nike. anchor the, this, this phrase to their logo. Or uh, just uh, I don't remember their phrase. Or yeah, but I get what you mean. You're gonna, you're gonna you're gonna remember it instantly. Yeah. Like you don't even exactly. have to remember it if you're gonna hear it. Yeah. Like oh yeah, yeah, that's that. You know exactly. I if I would say just do it, at least twenty percent of the people will think about Nike almost immediately. And that's just how that's just showing the power of anchoring and branding and marketing and okay. So that that that's one essentially re really really useful tool for NLP, which yeah. you gave like. The, uh, I would say not negative side, but like one example that I don't think everybody is happy with. And you also gave the option to reframe it, which is really good. So like it's really easy to build an anchor. Anyone can Google it or watch a YouTube video. It's yeah. really easy to do an anchor. And even if you, you, you don't find yourself doing it yourself, you can ask someone to do it for you because it's not that hard. Yeah. Okay. That, so that's one option. So what, what other NLP tools can we use? On our daily what basis. What other NLP tools we can use on daily? Uh, so actually, I would say the neurological levels. You can use it uh, on your daily basis. See what do you want from life and what is the next step, what you should do. For example, uh, one of the high neurological levels is identity. What is your identity? Ident what, okay. what is your belief about your identity? What do you think about yourself? So. When you change it, it's really big when you change what you, you think about yourself. For example, I would believe that uh, you would consider yourself, your identity, one of your identities is a streamer. Yeah. But it, I'm sure it wasn't as uh, great like that when you started. Oh, definitely not. 100%. No, no, time. no. I recall my first streams, I was the most social, socially awkward person you can imagine because like I was never... Look, I was on social media for a long time, but I never was uh, in the point of like being in front of a camera for a long, for a long time and watching someone, entertaining someone uh, um, and talking with many other people. I tried it back in the days in Instagram, but live back then was really like iffy. It wasn't very reliable. Yeah, live start, only started to So the thing is, the first, the first thing that made live was Twitch. It was before there was something called Justin TV. Uh, and then that was bought by Amazon and became Twitch TV and obviously blew up. And because of that, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram because Facebook and Instagram are together. So like they all made live because they saw the potential. Even Steam has live right now. You know that? It's crazy. Like literally every uh, every like uh, social platform. They all copy each other. So example. I mean like I understand why too, man. Live, having a live feature, a streaming feature is brilliant. It's just, it, it opens up the opportunity for other people to just watch your life, do what you, like doing what you're doing and maybe even expose yourself in like, um, people love seeing other people's life, you know? Uh, I it, think it's a raw form of uh, media. Like it's, it's not edited, it's not, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, not cut, armed, it's, not, exactly. it's not influenced by others. So and I feel for like- For example, even a podcast is a new form of media. It's, and it seems like it's really succeeding. Yeah. I'm looking for other, other people and I was like, dude, I want to try that, not even to succeed at that. I just wanted to see like how it works out. From that perspective, how do people react to that? Yeah, how, how, what is podcasting anyway? Like, what what is that like sitting with someone else and just saying like, okay, that's that's what you think. I want to understand. I feel like it for me at least. Like, what am I getting from this as a beneficial tool? Is will be like, um, it helps me to concentrate knowing that I'm podcasting someone rather than just having a conversation. I think there's a different per perception level. Uh, a few and the other person and everybody that listens when they're having an actual conversation that is being recorded live. Yeah. And I Compared think there's things. another element to this, like when you're with your friends, there's stuff you will talk about that you won't talk in the public. Yeah. But right now you have this opportunity to talk about few subject for a long time. And even when you're talking to your friends, you won't have this opportunity because you're talking about something and someone else interrupts it and maybe your phone and there's uh, more people there. So they might interrupt you too and you lose your line of thought and then you're talking about another subject and another subject and another subject and it's rolling like that. You never can focus on like one set of subjects like yeah. we're doing here or at least 
uh, one line of thinking. Like, yeah, there's too much things that are happening at the same time, and yeah, you're really exactly. losing track, and even, like, a very, very deep conversation can re- easily be cut by other things, like, um, honestly, like, other friends talking with you at the same time, maybe just, like, the scenario, you know, like, you just want to cut and go to something else. And if you're, like, having a podcast or, like, any, any social uh, interaction that gives you the opportunity to have a podcast-themed conversation is really beneficial for the people that are being involved in it. If it it's being the audience that are actually listening and seeing two people having an honest conversation, or is it the two people that are just passing information between each other? There's something called a, a, a connected mind. You recall that definition? That essentially if two people are getting on the same level of mindset and they talk about the same thing, uh, they, they will find themselves talking about, uh, like mentioning the same thing that other person was thinking about. And the definition of it is called, I, I don't recall if it's called connected mind. No, I think it's I called think the third mind. It was from NLP 100%. But the definition of it, essentially what it says, it's that the minds are connecting in a certain level, a certain vibration of energy. Maybe, and I'm trying not maybe, to connect spirituality to it, that, yeah? I think that maybe if you don't want to connect spirituality and that's... Yeah, exactly. Fine. I'm trying to separate for fine. now because, yeah. But if you don't want to talk about spirituality, I think that two people that are thinking the same thoughts or feeding, feeding each other the same thoughts over time, their brain sort of adjust in yeah. their uh, vi- vibration. Yeah, I'm trying to call like, it a different way. That no, is more, vibration uh, is totally fine. Frequency, frequency. Frequency, like, there frequency, you go. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. I know what your uh, uh, look on spirituality, we may talk about it later, but like I was just trying to keep it very, very like uh, yeah. on the point scientific. right now. For, uh, for now, for now. Yeah. I don't mind. We're definitely going to get there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I definitely have my own take on that. But um, yeah, for now, I just want to keep it very, very scientific just to give you some like... Uh, uh, comfort towards your like mindset on how you yeah, want to describe that's, things that's totally fine i'm spiritual as well but in a different way you know mm-hmm. each person has a different like that's a concept from, from nlp the map is not the territory so each person has a map in their mind each person has different belief different values different thoughts different memories different experience it all builds up to how you Uh, filter the world after you perceive it through your senses so you perceive something from your senses you filter it through your beliefs and memories and all all that and after that you have an er internal representation of reality like what do you believe what do you believe about reality how do you see it in your own mind and that affects directly your behavior and your physiology and all those things so uh one of the things NLP taught me is that the map is not the territory or your all your values and beliefs and your internal internal representation about reality is not reality itself. It's mm-hmm. only how your brain filters reality. But no one can ever uh, perceive reality as it is. Even you but can... everybody will perceive reality in different manners too, according to yeah. their own their uh, their own like territory, as you said. Exactly, their own maps. Yeah, their own maps. So, yeah. what could, could you like define like to other people like give you a better explanation to what is a map in a territory? Like, uh, how... yeah, of course. So, for example, if you go to the simplest explanation, a map like a map is a map. Like, yeah. A map you're looking at, it shows you the the roads and the mountains and maybe the height and all this information but the map itself won't show you exactly what's happening in reality and the environment can change and other roads can be built and some roads can be blocked and the the main point is that the map itself doesn't describe the reality as it is and if we go deeper other species or other animals see reality in a different way for example Birds has more senses. Birds have a sense, electromagne- electromagnetic Oh, yeah, sense. you mentioned. That was yeah. awesome, dude. You have to tell that to the audience. That, that's so brilliant. Birds have electromagnetic sense, which helps them navigate, navigate uh, around the world when they're flying uh, using the, the uh, earth magnetic pole. Okay. And how, how did people find that out? Like, how did they know, like, oh... Awesome. Yeah, I know. Birds are using electromagnetic so fields. I don't know exactly how did they found out, but I would guess that in a laboratory you can use electromagnetic fields to cause to them to go a certain to way see, or something. Yeah, how 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 they react how to they it. React to it. Now that would, that makes sense. I, I, I would assume that's how they do it. Something crazier that I have no idea how people figured this out. Dolphins communicate with each other with sonars, but they can picture. 
they can uh, build, they can use sonars in a, a, to, to communicate 3D pictures one another. I might be wrong about that. I, I know what you're talking about and like I heard that. that too. And as far as I remember, that is correct. Like, uh, I do recall something like that. It's something crazy, man. It's, it's, something, no it's something very crazy. I understand what you mean, though. I, I know what you're talking about. That's crazy, dude. You realize and like that the difference? Are really smart. Yeah, I know, but uh, I mean, like, it, just understand that like different animals have different concepts of perception and different communication methods that and are just different people. Yeah, I mean, like, two. That's one hundred percent. But I mean, like, it's just crazy because we are human beings. We have so many differentiation of the way that we communicate. Even as simple as like talking with you right now or like making different hand gestures and you need to talk about it too. You need to talk about uh, visualization, feel there are more auditorial. Virtual space. Yeah, no, no. Talk about like the different yeah, uh, perceptions of people because someone can be more visualized. Someone can be more thinkers. Yes, there you go. So that's really good because that will maybe give them the idea of like uh, how different people think. Because I don't recall what you said. I think you said I'm very uh, visual. That you, you might be very visual. Yeah, but I don't recall yeah. what you actually... Can, can you tell me how you examined that? So there are three... I'm sure this is a spectrum and this is not 100%, but by observation, and you can do it uh, by yourself, uh, by asking people, there are three and maybe there are more different types of thinkers. So the two uh, most um, uh, known ones are visuals, and people that think with their with with yeah. visualization people, for like closing their eyes and just people, like visualizing when something. they close their eyes not even when they close their eyes they might be thinking all day just with pictures and movies and just visualizations with their mind yeah some so some people in your audience might be listening to this right now and saying yeah obviously i do that all the time and other, so it's not that obvious yeah it's not so obvious. other people who are auditory might be thinking what other people don't think with words how yeah. is it possible so you say some people are just like me i'm trying to think how i am thinking that's what i want i want to other people to okay. see what i mean by that it's like when i even like i talk with you i i think i'm i'm more tutorial like i will talk with myself in a different voice inside of my head I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I, I would say that maybe I have a bit of visualization, but yeah, I'm and used to suspect. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, no one is just that. But I would say like, I will mostly talk with myself in another voice. I think it's very distracting too to have another voice inside of your head. I think you're a kinesthetic and a kinesthetic is a person who mainly thinks with feelings and associations. And for example, there are, pe they are people who learn very well from actions. So mm -hmm. uh, those people, like if I would let a kinesthetic person do woodworking, for example, he would enjoy it far more than a visual person. And a visual person might enjoy, uh, I don't know, drawing much more than an auditory person. An auditory person might enjoy books and uh, Could you change and... it? Could you change like the way that you visualize things? Um, I don't know. I'm curious. I don't know. Because you, you'd say that a certain uh, uh, like scale will be enjoyed by a certain person, right? It, can it be the other way around? Can a certain person like a certain thing more just be, like, will uh, be more like uh, auditorial just because he does more music? Uh, I don't know. I'm curious. I know that if you practice something for long enough, you mm -hmm. change your neurology, you change your neural pathways. Okay. So you can build new skills. I don't know how effective, effective it is. I know that I am myself trying to work on my visualization for different uh, reasons to re recall dreams better and all this stuff. So would, would you say there's like a certain like uh, a method that will be more beneficial for a certain event? Mm, I don't know. I haven't researched. Because I'm curious. Anymore. You're saying about memory, for example. I can definitely 100% say that when I started visualizing that room, remember we talked about it? So and like having those pictures, about, that was way easier. About memory, I just learned as... Uh, it's crazy. A way to remember, for example, 10 words. You can give me 10 words, you can write them on the paper. I can memorize them for, uh, I don't know, one minute, and I would remember those 10 words afterwards. So, uh, how do you do it? That's what I'm going to explain. It's really easy. You just build a story in your head around those words. So you actually build a story, for example. You, oh, you, it's funny that you mentioned that because like that happened to me. You know when they taught me that? Uh, when I was in the army as a commander, 
they taught us to remember like the path we need to go uh, with, like when you do the navigations. Remember, like we have like a uh, two weeks, I think it was one week in the morning and Try one week at night. It yeah, you have to. No, no, they would tell us to create a a, a road story. They, mm. they would tell us to create a road story. It's funny because like I never liked that method, never in my life. Like I I, I see what you mean, but I was like, oh dude, I remember that. Uh, the way that I recalled it eventually, I think I rhymed it to myself. Yeah. I, I used to rhyme it. That's another way. No, to it's cool things. though because I'm, I'm thinking about auditory I was like, way to yeah. So that's an auditory way, and you're just saying like a, a more like how would you call it? Is it more a visualized way? A story like a, a road story? Mm, I don't know because the story thing uh, worked for me, and I'm an auditory. But the story in my head can be both visual and. And yeah, yeah, maybe, you can, maybe you can talk a yeah. story to yourself, and you can actually imagine a story. Yeah, I was a completely different person back then, so I, I, maybe it will work for me right now. You know, like back in there, I was like a very grumpy maybe person. Maybe both work. And very, yeah, I was like all in all, just a very like I, I don't want to. I just need to go there. You know, like I didn't really like care about like how I do it. Um, I recall that eventually, just memorized it somehow. I think it was you've through... done it before. What do you mean, like uh, memorizing stuff? No, you've done the the route. What do you mean? The, what, what do you mean by a route? When you were in the army navigating. Okay. Have you done the the, the navigation before? Uh, oh no, before you don't. So that's the thing. So oh, you get so you, you get a map. You without, get a map. Oh. They're like saying, "Hey, this is the start point. This is the end point." Uh, there's like uh, some places there are like the navigations. Uh, uh, how do you call it? Um, key points. Yeah, like key points across the way that you need to reach. Like uh, refill your uh, water, uh, refill, eat food because it's a long one. And there was uh, like a check that you're like, we had like a, how do you call it? Um, uh, communication devices, right? So we had communication devices. So we go through like a person that checks that the communication devices still work. If you have any problems, you know where to default to. And I, I just recall like, I, I hated that. I hate the navigations because I, I would like be, back in the days, dude, at that times, I couldn't stand being with myself. I was a very like, uh, like the opposite of self-absorbed. I was really like. Uh, Same for me. Ooh, that was a hard time and I recall that I was like I was really upset with myself like I didn't like being myself so I recall every time we we had navigations and you go with another teammate um, you don't go alone you go with another teammate but he's not allowed to speak and he's not allowed to tell you to go route obviously he needs to remember his it's like health right so we have an, uh, a point and from that point uh, he goes so you have to uh, you have to like really like be on that and I just recalled I, I just I remember like being very, very like, uh, I didn't want to talk with anyone, but I didn't enjoy not talking with anyone at the same time. So what was the really weird moments of my life? But I, I really like that. I really like the navigations in general, like the... Um, Do you think you were more introvert in the past and now you're more... What do you mean introvert? Like in what, what sense? Uh, like you didn't enjoy social interactions and you wanted I to be I definitely alone. 100% didn't want to have any social interaction back and then. And right now that changed completely. Um, or, uh, yes, or, yes and no. Partly. Yes and no. I, I would appreciate more being alone because uh, um, I know myself, you know, like I, 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 so I'm, there's a different, uh, there's a different uh, uh, definition between being lonely and being alone, you know? Yeah. I, I, I have this big tattoo on my back, like the wolf, like I, I, I respect the pack, you know, like I will be with the pack. Uh, and I will be definitely a really good part of the pack, you know, even leading the pack at some point. But, you need but I will. Uh, I wouldn't even need my alone time. If I will have you my will alone time, I will appreciate it. I understand that it's a learning curve and it's part of something. Back in the days though, it wasn't like that. I was definitely lonely, you know? Like if I was alone, I wasn't alone, I was lonely. I was really like looking looking for someone to uh, compensate for a certain thing. Like maybe like uh, if it was love or it was a friendship, things like that. And um, as soon as one thing got detached from me, what, which was like, you know, cut was the um, re my relationship for three years. I was like, whoa, okay, damn, okay. I'm really alone like you know like i'm alone and there's no one next to me and that uh, realization was really like you know the, like really like pulling you back and like damn okay fight or flight you know and you had some uh, satori moment i had yeah i had definitely a satori moment that was a moment of like realization that like uh, it's either fight or flight right now and uh funny enough first of all i did try to <laughs> uh to end it and as soon as i realized that i just i'm not ready to end it yet you know like it's a really powerful thing to say dude i'm not ready to end it yet and as soon as you say that, you're like, okay, switched in your mind, exactly. Like in because as moment. soon as soon as I said, like, I'm not ready to end it, I was like, okay, fine. I was like in very like uh, energized, very, very like in the moment, you know, like I was, I could even describe to you how aware I was at that point. I was like, absolutely in that millisecond, you know? So when I asked that, I was like, okay, I'm not ready to end it because I'm still young and I know I'm not done yet. You know, I just started my work in this world. 
And I was like, okay, I'm not ready to, to, to be over with it, but what am I gonna do now? And then when I asked that question, I think like what we talked about the pyramid, I was at that specific moment just defining my why. I was like, okay, you're not ready to end it. So either this, you do it or- Exactly, or and I decided I am gonna do it because I didn't jump, you know? So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. How am I gonna do it? And then I said, okay, first of all, uh, I'm gonna find my friends again. I'm gonna reconnect with them and I connected to a lot of friends. It was so fast because my why was that strong, you know? Who I changed my body. first? What do you say? Who did you connect uh, Leon. Leon? Le Leonid. Leonid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leonid was my friend for a long time. They Leonid. know him from one stream that we did uh, with workouts. Dude, this guy's insane. Leonid is just uh, an athlete, He's dude. built like... He Bro, he is his an biology, athlete. His I, I'll, are... I'll, I'll bring him one time. I really want to talk with him. I think he's a very smart person. Um, he can be an MMA fighter. He, he dude, he is a talented he can do person. He, he is, he, yeah, that's the mentality that I'm getting from me. He, he knows what he wants in life and he will do everything uh, uh, to do it. And he will do it. You know, he will, he will do it. There's like no uh, um, uh, think, thoughts about it, you know? So, like, I first of all connected with him and I decided I'm going to change my body. It was something that I was like, I'm going to change my body. That's, it's a done deal. Like, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet either. because, oh, dude, I had no clue about fitness until I was like 20. 20 and a half, something like that. I had, uh, the only thing that I knew how to run in was World of Warcraft, man. That's the only <laughs> thing I knew. I knew how to hold shift and run, you know, like that's it. And maybe mount on something and just like, you know, run faster, like fly in the air and stuff like, but like inside the game, of course. But um, yeah. in a lucid dreaming too, but back then could I wouldn't be, know that. Could be cool in reality. Yeah, but, but yeah, essentially I was very like, uh, I was definitely an emo, you know, like I would have like all the yeah. air bang to the side, I had to And that also, also affected the way you feel. Oh, definitely. I was, uh, I feel like at some point in my uh, uh, early teenagehood, I accepted the fact that I'm depressed and I do not want to change. Like mm. I accepted it and I would protect my depression and say like, hey guys, I am depressed. I were like, what, what are you depressed about? I don't know, but I'm depressed. I have a you know? similar story to that. And the thing is, before you say that, it's yeah. like, that, that thing, that chill that we're creating, that, that is our ego, right? And we don't want to let go of it. And us, why do we not want to let go of it? Because you're saying, okay, if, we, if I'm not that thing, like for example, depressed, what am I? You know, and it's a really powerful question. Because as soon as you're like, oh, okay, I'm not depressed, I decide I'm gonna change my life right now. And that's what I did, you know, because of those events, that snap. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be a happier person, I'm gonna change my mindset, I'm gonna be a healthier person, I'm gonna change my body, I'm gonna meet and be socialized. Uh, more and as soon as I did all of those things together, I just see myself changing. It was very, very like instant. I wouldn't say it took me like years to do it. Obviously, the, the entire process yeah, the entire takes process years, took but years, everything but was so instant. Was yeah, it was like in one second. I was just like, I'm done. Today's the day. I'm gonna change my body. I'm gonna change my mind. Boom, it's done. So your story really reminds me first of you. You've read the book, The Power of Now. Oh yeah, hell and yeah, uh, way, by uh, Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. Okay. So the way this fantastic book, book begins, by the way. Yeah, I think awesome guys, book. if you guys have not read, uh, uh, what was that? The Power of Now. The Power of Now. The Power of Now this by Eckhart Tolle. It's not even about spirituality. Yes, and, I mean, like, yeah, of course it is. It's but about the self. It's like saying, uh, uh, get, uh, like, uh, think and get rich. It's about money. It's not yeah. really about money. It's more about like the perspective of how you perceive everything. Yeah. So I'm saying, uh, even if you're not looking for spirituality that moment. And reading that book is something very, very like empowering. Uh, um, I talked with one of my friends, um, um, and she said that she uh, she got really like frightened from that book because she was like, "Hold on a second, I I, I want to live in tomorrow. I want to live in yesterday. Why do I need to live now to be truly happy?" And like I told her, "You are not really happy tomorrow, or yesterday." You cannot be because and it's not tomorrow now. Tomorrow and yesterday is also not real. It's not real. Yeah, you can't be happy by something. It's and, not, and then I debunked her understanding of it, and she was like, "Oh, I understand why it's important to be happy now, but I'm not happy now." I was like, "Great, so you're making a progress. So I understand you're not happy right now. So ask yourself first of all, why? What what makes you upset? You know, like try to, uh, as you say, reframe it. You know, reframe your uh, uh, dissatisfaction of something. What are you doing right now that makes you unhappy right now? Yeah. because being happy not a state happy it's a verb you do so, you happily do something yeah oh i love that love that's, that's what that's, richard that's bender richard says bender, it's yeah. amazing dude this guy is brilliant if you guys don't know anything about nlp i would definitely recommend you to just go to youtube and write richard bender and just go through it the entire playlist there's so many yeah. things and he is he puts uh, uh sense into things in two minutes he takes two minutes nlp 
He simplifies it. He puts it into words. Yeah, he makes it he philosophical. Blo- I remember the first time you showed me Richard Bandler. I was like, dude, who the hell is this guy? He is a genius. Because I think um, the way that he did it also is really simple for other people to listen to. Because most people don't want to sit and listen for 15 minutes. Yeah. I and don't have the used, patience for it. We used to do it. But. Yo, the thing is, yeah. But I remember just watching. I'm like, dude, that those two minutes was enough for me to incentivize me to go and check another two minutes. You know? Because it was only two minutes. So I wouldn't feel like, uh, oh, God, I, I don't want to listen to this it guy. Gets to the point really it gets fast. to the point very fast i'm like whoa okay that was really interesting i want to hear more of that you so know a little thing changed yeah. in you that moment, yeah exactly then you wanted more exactly dude so i mean like okay so your experience can you like uh, you uh said- yeah I, I started with the book first so how did this book begin you told us that uh, you accepted the fact that you're depressed because it gave you something yeah so i accepted the fact in yeah. that book and also you you were in that point where you were so depressed that you had a, a certain realization that was later in life. So in the book, he got to this point as well, at the beginning of the book. He, he's telling a story of how he was lying in his bed, I think, and he was feeling Oh, that's right, so that's right, depressed. with the train or something? I something don't with remember, the train, I recall, okay. But he was feeling so depressed so long ago. that he was thinking about killing himself. It was that intense. And he told himself, um, I hate myself or something like that. And then he had uh, a moment of realization. He said to himself, who is I and who is myself? Why am I talking in, in like, two different like bodies? In two like different... There are two different uh, personalities here. I and myself. I hate myself. Are there different, are there different levels to, 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 to me? So he thought to himself, uh, uh, like, there is the I, the one who observe, can observe even myself, and there is the myself, the ego. So you have the ego, what you believe about yourself and all those things, and you have this awareness that observe all those things, and this is actually you, because, or maybe not, but uh, basically it's one step behind like this is how Jor- jordan peterson describes no, it. jordan peterson is an amazing person you definitely yeah. need to talk about him too man yeah. most people here i don't think they know him and uh, many other uh gary v uh, gary v, gary v is jordan mega peterson. toxic he's yeah, mega he's toxic so- no i wouldn't but hold on no but he's amazing he's yeah. very inspiring person no I, he likes he likes to emphasize things with cursing mm. and I, you know what man I, i'm not tony i'm not robbins a big too. i'm not a big yeah i'm not a big and he talks about it too but tony robbins doesn't curse as much but I even that even though only even though videos. even yeah even though he always explains why he's doing it and respect the reason that he's doing it he's not using cursing as in a way to like fill sentences he's using it to emphasize something that you need to understand tony robbins uh, Tony Robbins and Gary Vee at the same oh, time. Okay. I think both of them. I think every good uh, 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 speech man, everyone that like uh, does like motivational speeches and stuff, and they use cursing Richard as a method. Too. He said that. Yeah, he yeah, he said that. I agree. Your pattern of thought. Exactly. Because if I curse right now, yeah, everyone will be like. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I believe there's different ways to do so. Like, yeah. I really believe there's many other ways to do it without cursing. With that said, though, I don't think... I never, like, judge other people. I think that everybody has their own concepts and methods to do things. And that's what makes them unique. And I think, like, my method... First of all, the reason I do it is very simple. I want to approach everybody. And, like, I want, I want to, like, in theory, to have an 80 years old sitting here and listening to this and having some educational content uh, being provided for him uh, in a certain level that is not like forced upon him, you know, because when you're going to school and just like, you know, you sit in a class, you feel like uh, somebody is forcing you to listen. So you don't really want to listen because somebody's being, you're being forced to do so. But when you're just listening and hear, hearing a podcast, that's what I love doing, uh, especially Joe Rogan. And I just love this guy. It's just that he speaks with someone and I'm just like a, a by, bystander from the conversation being like listening to this conversation, just saying, oh, okay, I like that. That's, that's good to know. And if I don't want to just click pause or skip forward, you know, I don't have to be part of this conversation, but I want to because I chose to. And when you choose to do something, obviously it's way more beneficial than being forced to do something. It's like saying you have a deadline to, uh, uh, to finish that uh, a specific task, right? It's going to be way less beneficial than saying, listen, I want to do this task. So obviously I don't even need a time frame for it, you know? In reality, like it's not always working like that. It's much rower than what we were used to, and I also think that the whole school or education system is no not working the way it should work right now, because now a lot of children, many children, uh, they have uh, ADHD and all those different ways of describing just kids not wanting to sit in class and do something they don't like, and 
now the amount or the percentage of kids that have ADHD and all those other stuff, no matter how the how, what you call it, is huge. Like in Israel, for example, almost every kid that uh, goes to be checked as ADHD. Oh yeah, I just and read about it. I think Joe Rogan and Dr. Phil was talking about yeah. that. Exactly that thing. It's crazy, dude. Uh, and they talked about the same concept. They're like, I, I think like the, the, the medical industry, like oh, every, every, every person from that industry just tries to get income, you know, and they're yeah, trying and they prescribe, and they prescribe uh, it because essentially yeah. no one is really tapping them saying like, whoa, you cannot do that. You know, So I think I'm not even sure if it's their fault because uh, it's, they, it's the fault of the ruling try system. To change the people instead of changing the system, but changing the system is harder. Like, yeah. how will you change the school? It's possible, but how will you do it everyone in the world i think everything is a big snap way. you know i feel like everything is a big snap in the sense of like everybody needs to have some sort of like boundaries uh, uh being put out and you cannot really reach a boundary before you know what's too much you yeah. know and there's only one way to know what's too much is just continue like in that sense i don't think it's good but i mean like i don't see any other way to make the ruling system different by just prescribing it to everybody until someone's gonna, gonna like from the top, you know, yeah, it's like, I whoa, just, I that's not okay. I think it's biology, it's evolution. Like, yeah. I think that because of uh, phones and social media and all those notifications that we get all the time, our brains uh, learned to think fast and receive uh, different, uh, 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 different uh, pictures or different or um, uh, a lot of information in one moment. Oh, this notification, oh, this. Uh, this thing on TV, oh, this thing in my computer. You receive so much information and then you sit in class and you have to listen to someone speak for one hour when all, the, you, all you care about is those dopamine rushes. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but I think that you can change the system to match the way people are learning today. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it was actually like that even how, 20 how, years how, ago. I, I would say like, I hear people like saying like, you need to change the school system. Like, I, I will look, I, I'll tell you one thing. I, I Like the way that I perceive it. Look, I wasn't the biggest study. Like I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't a good study. I was a horror. I, I know, I was, <laughs> uh, and I, I'll tell you why. I, and I'm, I love, I love learning. I listen to Oh dude, I'm always talking day. about it. Listen, I have a lot of people in my, in my stream, in my, like, in my job that are, they are not good students and most of them obviously are like uh, teenagers. So they are in their school time. And I'm like, dude, I cannot lecture them to be a good student because first of all, I wasn't. With that said though, I, I, do, li I do think that there was something about being in school that gave me like some sort of like a concept that I st I afterwards got even bigger when I went to the army. It was things needs to be bounded to you because uh, if you won't get things bounded to you, like being like, uh, you, you're gonna go through stuff, you won't have that snap. Right. So if you're always going like to escape you stuff, hardship, that's yeah, hardship. exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much for rephrasing that. But essentially, like, you have to go through some sort of hardship to understand that you are in something that you do not like sometimes. And when you're saying like, OK, I do not like this. What do I want to do uh, uh, as a contrasting thing? Right. Because if you don't have this uh, uh, modal or a contrasting modal, you don't really know by uh, what to go. You know, you have to create it somehow. It's like you 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 learn as a as a, a baby to walk because you saw your uh, mommy and daddy walking right or something like that. So According you, to that, you, you need know? a balance in life and everything. You so have for to. example, if you would like to change the system school, you would still need some hardship because exactly people can't live their life exactly. On I a, on a, I'm like, afraid. I'm afraid to have no school system more than I'm afraid to yeah, have a school course. system. And I'll explain of to you course. why because there has to have some sort of like understanding of okay. How otherwise would you know that you suck at math? Just an example. No. And it, it, I'm trying to go with the opposite on the reason, you know? Like, because when you say like, okay, I suck at it and I just genuinely don't like math. I don't like math. I know a lot of people that are very passionate about it. I am accepting the fact, uh, obviously because I, I looked at it and observed it I, it, I don't like math, you know? With that said, I learned that I really like English and I like speaking English and that's why I learned more about it. I learned uh, that I really like gaming, dude, and I was gaming throughout all of my school and When you're school gaming, years. think about it this way. When you're gaming, the amount of information you receive, the amount of neurons firing in your brain is huge. I know. And it's like, it's not different than learning. So if you take learning and find a way to... To learn your own way, yeah. Yes, to learn your own way. So, Right now, I think that school system is trying to push you to be a certain person, to be an engineer, to be 
and th that's also yeah, fine. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You, people, people always say, do what you like and love in life. And I agree with that. Everyone should do what they love in life. But you wouldn't be able to do what you love in life if you wouldn't have people uh, picking up the groceries and picking up the, the fruits and vegetables in the stores and uh, ordering everybody has a purpose uh, yes everyone and that's i, I want to repeat that someone, dude, because people are forgetting that sometimes the trash and it's important and yeah I people appreciate this people people are forgetting that everybody has a purpose man and that's i think that's one of the realizations that i had you can't be a streamer if someone didn't watch uh, me yeah didn't created this like if someone oh that's also yeah, installed that's true. this yeah, internet yeah, yeah, yeah. in this house in this neighborhood yeah, that's a that's a macro that's like the, yeah. the bigger realization of like not even why but how yeah so if you have it in yourself to be an entrepreneur or to do what you love do it and my brother for example he likes to code mm -hmm. so he became a coder so jacob jacob really got passionate yeah. about it recently yeah it's yeah. it's nice to see that so he became a coder not an entrepreneur he's not uh he's not independent he's working in a company but mm -hmm. he likes it he's happy yeah. and if you like it if you like doing it do it it doesn't matter yeah i don't i don't think that it's wrong to go in a lot of people think that 95 job is like a definition of something bad no D but depends I think what you certain people don't that's enjoy. that's true but i think that it really depends what you're doing between that nine to five yeah. you know for example like, if you're I, yeah you know like five. i'm just i don't get the dis definition of like oh that's bad don't do a 95 job and that doesn't mean it's not hard I'm exactly sure it's, super hard, but... it's I'm not saying it's wrong too, man. I'm just saying like, we have to have some like balance between everything. Like for example, what we talked about with school, right? So I have a, an awesome analogy for okay. you, okay? You're streaming for five, six hours every day and you- I would say about that much, yeah. Okay, and you work on your stream for a few hours before that? Before and after, yeah. Okay, so it's very hard, do you agree with me? Sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes okay, it's sometimes, very comfortable. Sometimes. But you had times it was, you oh, had times 100%, it was super it was hard, insanely hard and you were under stress and everything, right? Com consistently so this is an example for you going through hardship and still learning and still doing what you love and if you take this and apply it to school we would have a system when the students could still go through hardship but find their own passion enjoy, yeah find so their own what passion. would you say having more uh, more like kind kind of opportunities for the children's maybe have less uh, limits because i know for example as a kid something that i really wanted to do was uh, going to uh uh, um, uh, computer engineering like we had like this class right and uh, they wouldn't let me just because my score wasn't good enough and I was like dude listen if you guys don't even want to let me have the opportunity to learn something that I genuinely want to learn more about and be passionate about it just because my scoring is wrong I mean excuse me for not liking math that much but honestly if I really want to learn more about computer engineering trust me I will learn more than I need in math you know what I mean so I think like it's more like about the boundaries that are being created in school right now they're very 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 limiting you know, especially later in the, in years when you have like, a, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but you have like those tests, right? To uh, score your IQ level and stuff like that. Uh, SATs? SATs. Yeah. Um, so like you have the SATs and if you're not passing those like uh, limitations for SATs, you can go and do whatever you want. And I mean like with all due respect, I understand why they're doing it to, yeah. to separate people like that are if, being- If you don't have a certain SAT, I'm sure that you can be a rocket engineer. Like that that is true, man. Can... But I feel like some of them are very limiting and yeah. uh, people are forgetting uh, uh, whoever made that is that there is something called passion and passion is more than just a learning curve it's something that you uh, you just need to learn through just experiencing something I, I do agree with you if someone really wants something he's gonna find a way to do it you know regardless you know like yeah. one way or another I didn't I didn't need to be to have a degree to be a personal trainer you know I just decided I want to do it I learned as the basics uh, for getting like a diploma and then I said okay I got this diploma I just want to and I know people who you trained and they were super happy yeah so like uh, it's it's more about like what are you passionate about I, I didn't need the entire shebang just to go and teach it I mean like some people do some people want to have like that degree in nutrition the degree in like I don't know like physiology and stuff and which is, is fine it's yeah. fantastic it's great we need people like that but I just don't think that's the only approach so sometimes uh, and that's why I'm saying I, I really I really believe in self-teaching I really believe in a way that like if I want to learn NLP, some people go to a curse. Like I had a, a good friend of me uh, of mine that went to a curse of NLP just to learn how to do NLP. And I was like, good, that's that's good for you. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe you need to have that system, you know? I didn't. Like as soon as I wanted to learn NLP, it was because I was very intrigued with it and I wanted to learn it's it my own way, in my own in my own free time, you know, like patronize it. Because I, for example, why am I an entrepreneur? The reason that enjoy, I'm an entrepreneur- Because you enjoy receiving this information. Eventually. Yeah, the reason I'm an entrepreneur is, uh, it's a contrasting model. 
The reason and uh, the explanation for it is very simple. I don't like when people is bossing me. I'm the same I way. I cannot man. stand I'm that. I'm the same way. And because it puts a lot of like aggression out of me, which I don't like to put out, you know, because I don't like when people tell me what to do. I have to have my own reasoning for why I do it. Exactly. You know, and it doesn't mean, yeah, I have to be boss for life. Maybe at some point I will work for someone else, but I just need to understand what, what, what is purpose that drives me. And maybe if someone has the same mindset, I, might, I don't wouldn't mind that he's going to be uh, I'm tired. That's, that's you know, a like good high level for it. You know, I'm the same way, man. I can't work to someone else. Uh, I also figured it out in the army. I don't want to go by someone else's system. That's why I didn't really like school. But I think that you can give people more freedom. People get, can give more freedom to themselves and find what they love and. If they do it, they might enjoy it, whether it's a job or it's entrepreneurship. So you can build your own model of reality. You don't have to do it by the, the but how the system is prescribing it. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, I, I totally understand it. Um, all right, let's go back a lot. Damn, we, we went for a yeah. lot, dude. How much? What, dude, it was like an hour and 10 minutes already. What's the time? Right now, it's almost 6 p.m. Yeah, it's, we're talking for about an Wait, hour. Wait, damn. Wow. All right, so uh, let's go way, way back, dude. Let's go towards uh, NLP again, like the concept of it. And let's just say, okay, there's different patterning options, right? So you get, we, we, work, we talked about a couple of them. One of them was uh, reframing. We talked about anchoring. Uh, we talked about like the circle of power, like our circle of energy. We talked about all the necklaces and stuff. What other options will be to, uh, you, okay, I know what we want to talk about. Um, uh, uh, the eyes, remember, like where mm. you look, there's different definitions. Do we call something yeah. about it? You know what I'm talking about? Um, I'm not sure if it's scientifically proven, but... Uh, it's something that I notice I, a lot after being... But yeah, you can notice it. Yeah. You can notice it. Uh, so, so could you like explain it like in a way, maybe even show that uh, to the camera? Like uh, So basically, if people... Uh, where is the camera? Did yeah. You okay, so basically, uh, People have a different, we talked about this, they have a different ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. But generally, when people try to visualize something, they tend to look upward, like left or right or just upward. So up, left or right when they're so, trying to visualize something. Yeah, and okay. usually when you look upward, if I'm looking to you, if you look upward to the right, okay. if I'm looking to you, yeah, yeah. My, oh, my okay, right, you're my right, right, you're right, you're okay. left. Okay. So that means you're trying to uh, re Vis remember visualization. And then if I'm looking to you and your eyes go to the left, okay. you're trying to create a visualization. Ooh. And I think it, you also... And if it you... might change between people, but if you go to creating one way, usually it goes to remembering the other way. Dude, it's funny because I'm doing it right now just thinking about yeah, doing and, that. <laughs> and once you know this information, you can catch yourself doing yeah. it throughout the Not day. Not only you, but other people. And then like, yeah. oh, okay, he's doing that right now. Yeah, and but it's really funny to catch yourself doing it because you can, you can like, I'm telling this story right now and you can be very skeptic about it. But later in the day, you can, sorry. But later in the day, you can find yourself doing this, like looking upward and you will tell yourself, wait, what did I just do? Why did I do that? And yeah. And so you catch yourself, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, exactly, more self-aware. All right, so what is like left and right, bottom, there's something like that, left right? Left and right is uh, auditory remembering and, cre and creating. Okay. So when you... Auditory and creating? Yeah. Pre okay. Okay, for example, if I tell yourself right now, uh, imagine the color of your door. So okay. You, oh, wow, I just... You, you went right. <laughs> this is crazy, dude. Yeah. I, I don't even think about it. <laughs> And if I will tell you, uh, try to imagine how would your mother look like if she were a dragon with swords. Okay, no, hold on. No, I'll, I'll look forward on them just because I'm aware of that. But yeah. I think maybe, yeah, maybe once part. you're aware of that, it's not hard. No, I actually did it right now. Just yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, it actually works. That's hilarious. Okay, what is left bottom and left, uh, right? left bottom? I don't remember which one is which, uh -huh. but one of them is uh, focusing on emotions, kinesthetic. It can be uh, emotions like happiness and uh, hmm. like sadness, but it can also be physical emotion. Like if I would tell you, uh, ima Focus on the emotion of how your leg feels or something mm -hmm. like that. So I, I see what you mean. Uh, is it related to people that are being like when they're sad, you know, like they have like the, their... The other one, the other one related to people. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it can be that, the, the, like the emotion, focusing on sad emotion, but it can also be uh, the other one, which is called uh, digital auditory, which is 
you talk to yourself. You're in a conversation with yourself. So when you're in a conversation with yourself, you look down? So did, that, did it happen to you that you were walking on stage and thinking and you were like... Yeah, like wandering down yeah. below, even though I wasn't really looking at yeah. something. Exactly. Yeah, definitely happened. I just remembered, so I was looking to the top. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's amazing. So how do people look for it if they want to learn more about it? Um, uh, just write eyes NLP in Google, I think. NLP? Eyes. I NLP. Eyes NLP. I, direct, I guess, right. I guess they will like. I, I don't remember how did I. Uh, how I, I think you showed me a video it. about it one time. It might be. And definitely in the book 100% there was that yeah, uh, in point. The book for that sure. That was 100%. So eyes NLP. If yeah. you guys are interested to learn more about it, eyes NLP. Yeah, and That's I crazy. see your eyes. Yeah, I'm like, ah. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know. <laughs> Just doing a complete circle, having a. <laughs> Okay, that's crazy, dude. Um, all right, so what other options do we have? We have an LMP. There, it's so I'm trying to recall. Yeah, I know. Of, of course, we're There's not even like in... Report. Yeah, okay, what For about example, it? example, if I'm sitting the same way you're sitting. Yeah. Or, or similar way. Even we without were, me noticing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it might be we're building, we're building report. Or if I'm talking the same language that you talk. So we talked about um, types of thinkers. So people who are visuals tend to say words like I see that or uh, like ways I can to imagine. describe yeah. things. Yeah. And people who uh, like more auditory can say I hear you. Stuff like I that. I see what you mean. Uh, or <laughs> I feel it for kinesthetic. <laughs> so if you match their language, they f will feel more connected to you. And if you match them for their exact language, they will feel much more connected for you. For example, a person who calls you brother, if you yeah. call him brother back. Yeah, it, later, will give you, it, will give, it will give that connection. Like yeah. maybe different, like, uh, I know Chris always does that and then yeah, you just exactly. fist bump and stuff like that. So, so they know Chris, by the way. I know Chris too, guys. Yeah, uh, Chris is a good friend of him too. Probably like, listening I mean, he, right he, now. He, he, met a, he met him while he came to visit me in Israel yeah. and he's... Um, we just connected. Yeah, he's, a, he's him, a good dude, man. I like him. He's a, he's a really nice person. I miss him a lot, dude. Man, we're talking... We have we're having deep conversation about that's all really the stuff good. We're talking the same about thing, uh, the same thing happened with my brother, man. Like he said with my brother, dude, they, they met for one time, yeah. bro. They sat and talked but for like he, an hour. He's also this kind of guy, which is really oh, definitely, easy to connect dude. To. It's, he will... If he was here and would have like a podcast again, it would be like a four hours podcast. Yeah. No and it will be it. about spirituality. It will be about spirituality, true. about lucid drink, one hundred percent, about like. Uh, Chris, what? tell us a crazy dream. He, he will have he will tell you. Up. Oh my god! <laughs> Which one do you want to hear? I have like they're, they're all like sorted and dated, man. He has a really good memory as well. Yeah. He Does really he write memory. them or record them? Um, I think at this point he just remembers them. Like mm. he legit just remembers, I and try he doesn't to remember them. The thing is that like some people say I remember, and they're just a way to like you know like too lazy to do stuff. For him, I really believe that just remembering is like a process that he's doing. That is so much as writing or recording something. He just records mm. it inside of his brain in his own method and it's uh it shows you know like he will pull like a memory and give you so much details about like the coloration of the shirt what was written on the shirt uh what he said what he thought so yeah i'm not trying to just remember it by remember it, remember it what i meant is when i wake up i take few seconds to try and recall the dream like to imagine yeah I, I usually record it i just grab like my phone yeah. i have my, i have my phone on uh, like when it's alarm clock it's gonna be really, really, really quiet alert. It's because gonna be like absolutely quiet. The, the problem I find with that, and it, it's fine, uh, but I usually my dreams, the main thing is not the what's happening, but the feeling behind you. That know, you, you felt. know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I definitely like understand. A certain uh, memory, it's. Sometimes. But it's a manifestation of what you felt before, yeah. in my opinion. But honestly, like, so I, I put the alarm very quiet and I wake up with it. And it just, the first thing that I do is just open the recording and just put it next to me. And even if I will not talk for five minutes, just, you know, processing my mind, I will have this recorded just so I won't have to have any other process. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I may even have it open. I just click, you know, start. And uh, after I start recording, I just talk about it and then I just leave it. And then I just rest for another time. Maybe I remember something else, you know, maybe I just rest. Um, and that's how I start my morning, which is a really nice thing to do, man. It helps you remember stuff. And I think there's some sort of like um, uh, you coming to some uh, um, um, peace with yourself when you dream. There is some sort of like, I, I don't know if that's a correct definition. So I'm, I'm telling you from my own like um, uh, anecdotal like point of view. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I come to peace with a lot of stuff uh, when I dream. Like uh, f 
through me remembering the dream and re possible yeah yeah i mean like maybe i mean it's the anecdotal for me for sure like that's what i feel 100 yeah. i just don't know if everybody feels like that or maybe that's the right definition of it but uh when i dream like uh in a very certain like uh, uh, uh emotional way i really feel like uh through recording and remembering it i yes, I, that's what I was about to ask you do you think that uh coming to peace with yourself is an effect of the dreams or an effect for you being of you being more aware of the dream i think it's both i both. think it's first of all like, yeah i i think obviously being aware of your dream is something very powerful because if you are not only aware of your dream but you memorizing it you like um because dreams is something so subtle and so like it, it vanishes so fast man you don't remember it no one else will remember it you're the only one that was aware of it you know so when you like uh, cherish that moment you talk about it you record it so you have it some other time you you create that like um you create the memory like you be that dream becomes something real and uh it, it's very symbolic to me you know because we all have dreams in our mind we have so many dreams about so even many if things you don't remember them and you think that you're not no i am not even speaking about dreams like in that yeah. kind of dreams i'm thinking like we're always dreaming right we're always like and we're really dreamy people. i wanted to talk about it yeah yeah like, so extend about it in a second i'm just saying like so like we are all very dreamy people you know so like if we like manifest that dream and we like say oh that was a dream but now i wrote it down it was one step towards my dream becoming true right so it works the same way in life you know like you have that concept you want to be a big streamer you want to be a big uh, entrepreneur in certain field and you start to take the first step that's like taking the recording you know it's like taking the recording remembering what you really want to do remind yourself what you want to do uh the same way to that you remember the dream and that's going to give you some concept so i get it uh you you were saying uh that throughout the day we're always dream not only when we're asleep maybe different kind of uh, i didn't say that but i understand what you mean yeah I, I think you said something similar maybe maybe i'm not sure but whatever no i agree with you yeah uh, that's so i true. believe it's actually very similar i think that actually when we're sleeping when we're dreaming we're in a REM sleep like we're in yeah, a rapid eye moment when we also learn a lot and we connect uh uh information from the past with new information and our brain does its thing that's what I think happening. But also throughout the day, we have moments when we zone out and we think about something. We're like dreaming, but while living, mm -hmm. while, while awake. Yeah, it so happens a lot. These moments are very similar. And I think uh, uh, like in NLP and in very different other practice, they call these moments trance. Trance moments. Like the same trance you have when, you, when someone is hypnotizing you. This is the same thing. So in this moment, you are very uh, susceptible to change, and you can do if if you are aware of that. While you're doing it, you can make small changes in yourself that will benefit you in the future. So maybe someone who's uh, more aware or aware enough of his dreams while he's sleeping, he can uh, try to uh, change them or try to affect them in order to benefit himself in the future and i'm sure that chris is doing it because he's, he told me similar yeah. stuff and maybe you're doing it because i remember you're doing a lot of losing dreaming in the past i was dreaming wasn't a thing that i've done uh, a lot it's things that happened to me that the recent the last recent time was vipassana yeah because you just reached like a certain level of awareness that is something that you cannot get on a daily basis but right you also practiced it. You I, I do practice, practice it I, I still do I still record my dreams but I never had like an actual lucid dreaming the definition of an actual lucid dreaming is you taking control of your dream yeah, exactly I have very clear dreams which means I have the, I, it's such a clear memory that I'll remember the sounds I remember the taste I remember like the things that I thought while being dream like under do the dream taste in your dreams sometimes yeah i don't remember uh i i feel like i feel pain obviously and stuff like yeah. that so like this is like i call it a very clear dream having a lucid dream it's think like chris is very very like uh, uh talented in that regard you know like he, he knows he knows how to reach that mindset and i would say that it's very very like um genetic i i there's no proof to that yeah, yeah. but i feel like there's some genetics that just give you the there opportunity is some something to it like, i'm sure there is to visualize yeah. people visual uh, visual people and auditory people i assure that yeah they, they have, have like their own ways or their own uh, like way but maybe i am I, maybe i am lucid dreaming i just don't know how to define it but i say again that's maybe the thing we all lucid dream and we don't remember it yeah that's also possible that's also possible because like i would definitely tell you that like um uh as soon as i memorize my dreams my dreams are way more clear and it's easier for me to uh um to pinpoint 
uh, situations and things that happen inside the dream. And I also see that uh, there's like, you know, the, there's cuts between dreams. Those cuts are you forgetting stuff, you know? I, I feel like it's all one big story, you know, that happens. Uh, I don't know if it's a fact or not. Yeah, I'm yeah, just saying I that I, I, I do see... The storyline is not, uh, it's like, it's not one line, but... Exactly. I get it. So I, I feel like I get less cuts inside the dream and I see more like things that are happening as one like fan, you know, like one thing that just like continues and it just gets more and more bizarre, but you know, like it changes and it just shifts um, throughout the dream rather than just, you know, cut. Okay, that's dream. Cut, that's dream. You know, like, because I feel like those cuts are just us forgetting the connections. Uh, or like maybe situations that happen maybe, but also like I remember my last dream and there was like the cuts are sometimes are simply like uh, there is no logical connection between the events so you imagine it like a cut but there there was some connection so for example I remember in my dream I was walking with my friends it was yesterday like I dreamt it. I was walking in my, with my friends on the street and then we parted ways so uh, i still remember like us parting ways but it was so illogical like why to do that and then the dream went another way like i i walked into a shopping mall uh, and like what it has to do with the with the dream before that like it's so random so we met we imagine these things as cats but sometimes maybe they're just uh illogical yeah maybe they're illogical to your mind because um you talked about it one time i think it was with you where you said like uh we do not we cannot see everything different different animals different species see different things yeah. so maybe we just cannot perceive certain things in our dream that we see in our dream but we cannot really perceive what we saw because dream is such a higher state of being right I so maybe see, you yeah. just perceive things that you, sorry you maybe you see things or like you experience things that are just you cannot define in your own yeah, head you so while don't you understand exactly but I, my, my fear about lucid dreaming is very simple. And that's why I, I told that to Chris as well, because I do feel that there's some benefits in not lucid dreaming. And I'm I explained sure that. that. No, sure. I'm not saying there's no benefits in lucid dreaming because there's a lot. There's, there's a heck There's benefits in both. Both, yeah. But I just see that. What is lucid dreaming compared to dreaming? Lucid dreaming means you are in complete control of your dream. You caught the fact that you are in a dream and you control that dream. Now you can fly, you can do a lot of cool stuff and stuff. Uh, and stuff, stuff and stuff, stuff and stuff. But and also um, stuff. yeah, a lot of stuff. <laughs> but uh, it limits you from perceiving things that maybe are very beneficial for your brain, but not for you consciously. Maybe to your subconscious, but not your conscious mind. So when you are dreaming, just solely dreaming, and you uh, 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 cherish that moment by you know recording it and stuff, that's great. But you also just by dreaming by itself. Uh, whether you remember it or not, you give your co your subconscious an opportunity to experience stuff that you essentially maybe not even supposed to experience con consciously, but maybe your subconscious needs to experience in order to evolve. Yeah, I agree with that because I think that dreams are a place where your subconscious uh, interacts your own memory because a lot of time you see in your dreams stuff that happened in your recent memory or past memory with a new, like, oh, sorry, uh, let me rephrase it past memories and past beliefs and past values with new memories, new experiences. And in this place is where uh, I heard someone saying that maybe this is where creativity happens because in a dream you have all the information uh, coming with new information and something new comes out of it, mm -hmm. that uh, thoughts that weren't inside your head before that and that might be the cause of, to creativity. I think so, I'm not sure, but uh, that also the way the brain forms beliefs and everything, and Jordan Peterson also said something interesting, which is uh, the dreams, not Jordan Peterson, but I think jo Jordan Peterson quote, he quotes, quoted that, he quoted uh, by Carl Jung, I think. Carl Jung, okay. Dreams, oh, he's amazing, dude. Uh, yeah. Wow, wow, he is. He is deep. He is. <laughs> so deep. I, I don't I don't even know how where to start because like I don't yeah. think I know anything even close to the like he the amount went, of knowledge he knows. Um yeah, he reaches a def different level definitely. So and he is hard to read. Uh, yeah, he has his own language. He has like a very um uh, scientific think, I think it's simply um like an old language like he wrote it a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, well even when they translate it to Hebrew like it's oh, very very yeah. ancient kind. It's hard it's to read. Like... I tried to read it. It was super hard. But Carl Jung was saying uh, the dreams are stories 
that created by our mind. The way we learn, even in uh, in like when not dreaming, we learn from stories better than just learning, just get uh, like receiving information. So dreams are stories when we can learn from. So I'm gonna repeat that just to maybe breathe it better. Yeah, I maybe rephrase. No, no, it's it's good. Way, I understand. So dreams are stories that help us what again? Learn or not learn or the the brain maybe is trying to learn. Okay, uh, so the thing is, the, me... the dream um, essentially is uh, uh, is your brain reading everything backwards. Maybe I have a. This is a crazy experiment they've done, and you can check it online. Okay. They took rats and they let them run a certain maze okay so the rats ran the maze and they measured their their uh, brain frequency and the, there was a certain pattern when they did the the maze and they let them do the maze few times so uh these rats when they slept the scientists observed the same frequency the same pattern while they're sleeping but some backwards no, I think I heard no, that not before. backwards. Maybe backwards. It was backwards. I remember because we maybe, saw it together. I think maybe, it was from Joe Rogan. But twenty times or something like that faster. Like mm -hmm. if if the the frequency was tan 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 tan. Yeah, it would so be faster. When they were asleep, it was tan 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 tan. Yeah, it was very very fast. Yeah, but the same pattern. So the crazy thing about this, they took these rats who were sleeping, and they took other rats which done the maze and they deprived them from from sleep. Okay. Okay. They let them both run the maze, and the rats that slept did it better. Ooh, so you're saying basically it's a way for your mind to also cope and uh, just improve. Yeah, and you. Uh, I have friends, another. I have another example for that. I have a, what he's he's dreaming about? Uh, fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's because when you sleep about... around, he's yeah, he, punching. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was really passionate about it. He's still passionate about it. It's fantastic. He's a he's a great guy. Yeah, he's very passionate about fighting. I mean, like he connected me to UFC and Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, I think he's a fantastic person. Um, I would say, I, I, I will tell you from yeah, because I'm really thinking yeah. about something that I recall when you mentioned that is like I, I remember that I wanted to you know what a yoga ball is you know yeah. the one that like the big ball. So I wanted to learn how to uh, stand on it and do squats for the first time. So I just recall uh, um, doing it for a couple of times and fall like actually do it and fall like like go with my knees and then fall go on my knees and fall and I, I would always sleep on it and what happens for your sleep is the same thing you said like you literally improve so like if you want to try something in the gym for example and you don't manage to like do it at the first time don't freak about it just sleep on it like yeah. literally, literally sleep on it same thing works with everything essentially and it's also Even with studying visualization by the way uh, they've done experiments when they showed that people who view visualize the task did better than people who didn't visualize the task just done it wow that's that that's crazy yeah so like visualizing the task while you're dreaming so maybe like no not only while you're oh dreaming. not even when you're yeah. dreaming just like even like conscious yeah but i would say like even like before you go to sleep sleeping with an intention right like i will go to sleep with the intention of improving myself yeah it might be and maybe it's like People say, uh, people, a lot of people ascribe a lot of value to something called the law of attraction. Uh -huh. Like, if you believe in something strongly enough, it will happen. Or yeah, something yeah, along I, those lines. Yeah, and I'm trying not to connect spiritual. Yeah, much so just, me too, me too. So yeah. I, I'm not about to talk about the spiritual. No, I, I want to talk about it, but I just want to like uh, separate it because there's so many things I want to yeah. talk with you about. And uh, it's probably going to be in different episodes. I will episodes. talk it, about it in a uh, NLP sense. Okay. So... I think that it, it does work, but not because of the reason people think it works. Maybe uh, there are more reasons, but the main reason I think it works is when you think about something a lot, you tend to see it more. And when you tend to see it more, you build your neurological pathways and uh, you have more chance to uh, see it again. For example, uh, if you're uh, into investing and you think about investing all day, so you will start to notice more opportunities to invest online on the street. Yeah, but I, I believe it. I, I say there's a big quote that I love. I don't recall by who it is, but it says like there, I define luck as a, a preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. So like by being like the law of attraction for me is very, very simplified and very, very like logical. Nice you are prepared. 
yeah. you are prepared to receive something and because you are prepared and accepting to receive something it's gonna come to you eventually yeah, one way or another more than that because if you think about it a lot you will also uh you will also increase notice con- it more. yeah because you you're more conscious to it yeah you're accepted the fact that you're looking for it but because you're looking for it you're gonna find it so how in one way or yeah, another so if you thought about someone and suddenly he called you yeah you would tend to think like Oh, there, there's something happening here. Yeah. I, I was just thinking about him and he called. But it can also be that you thought about him, so you've noticed that he called you. Yeah, you that's true. I, I agree with you. I see what you mean. Um, I mean, like, I see a lot of examples for it. Um, but honestly, like, oh, there's just so many, dude. Like, I, I don't even know where to start. But, like, honestly, that's, that's, that's a good idea, dude. But how is that connected to dreaming, for example? Like, how... How would you connect that to dreaming? Like um, having like maybe going with the intention of um, yeah. So I'm saying maybe you. I know. I'll, I'll, I'll give an example. I'll give you, you. I'll give you an example from Chris because Chris does it. He says that before he goes to sleep, he will meditate. He will cleanse his mind from everything that is negative and hateful or anything that is not related to him sleeping at the moment, and he will literally, literally chant to himself uh, that uh, while I go to sleep, I will lucid dream and I will be completely aware and control of my dreams. And when he does that, it works and he goes to lucid dreaming. Mm, it's like an it's a, more a practice too. Yeah, it's, uh, first of all, yeah, it's affirmation. And I would love for you to talk about affirmations as well, by the way. Okay. Affirmations and, uh, uh, um, and incantations, uh, if you know what's the difference. If no, not, no, I'll, no, I'll, no. I'll, I will talk about it. But honestly, like, uh, yeah, so that's what he does. So, I mean, like, it's a way to go into dreaming state as well, and, like in a lucid dreaming state too. Uh, but affirmations, yeah. Um, so you want me to talk about I mean, affirm- affirmation? Amazing. I think you know that about no, affirmation. No, feel free to just talk it now. I think it all goes back to the type of fingers and uh, or some modalities rather. When the what you think basically affects everything, what you believe, how you perceive your reality, your uh, filters, and also the law we just talked about that if you think about something uh, for long enough, you start to notice it more. So if you tell yourself uh and i have a great example for that if you tell yourself that you're strong uh every day you might start to believe it and for me it went the other way i told myself that i depressed i would even say that i faked it you faked to be depressed yes i faked i i uh i think you know the story why i did Uh, from the army Yeah, yeah, Yeah. yeah 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 okay so i faked being depressed but over time i really became depressed i wasn't faking it i was depressed like uh, you convinced yourself to be depressed yes but uh, it's it wasn't like i was mildly depressed like i was depressed yeah, yeah i like, understand well, i know you because you convince yourself yeah like, yeah but a lot of people do that nowadays not only convince myself but also i felt it i dude, I but it's so it. easy dude it's yeah. easy and you can go the other way you can i want to be happy and yeah uh, i know but people are like uh, it's comfortable to be depressed yeah Think about There's it. There's a, a benefit second. for that. First, you of get course, more attention. Of course, everybody's everybody's like giving you attention, and yeah. you get more. Um, look, like I, I'm gonna be I'm sure you. there are some people that have some uh, uh, deficiency in a certain uh, chemical in their brain, yeah. whether it's dopamine or serotonin, and they feel depressed, and they need uh, that balancing. They yeah. need pills, but I think I, I don't think that's like the best way to approach. I, stuff. I, I don't think too. I think that first you need to try other ways. There yeah. are some people that really need it. But I think that most people yeah. are just when we're, we're, we're defaulting. Yeah, we're defaulting yeah. to medications as well, man. Which we're I, generalizing I, it too much. Yeah, exactly. So like they're saying, like um, essentially, like they're just gonna default to medications, man. And I think like medications is last resort, man. In most cases, in most cases, some cases obviously, if something really happened and you need to actually yeah. like, confront it. That is one way, but I just feel that most people just don't need medications. And if I they're defaulting to it, same thing with people you. being sick, for example. Some it's like, people really need it. Some people like... Yeah, but like, how, how, way, do but you even, how do you even define who needs it or not? That's the thing. Like, co- I according- think maybe if your body, for example, uh, doesn't uh, provide that, you with serotonin. I would, like, no, no, no. I'll tell example. you the thing. I'll tell you the problem with it right now. Because if I will go to a doctor right now, I'll be like, hey, dude, I feel upset today. And yesterday I felt great. He will prescribe Exactly. Me. So who do I trust? So, not them. Yeah, the thing is, so what are you saying? Don't trust doctors? I'm that's sure there are some either. doctors. I the don't want to generalize yeah. all no, doctors. No, no, that's true. I'm that's sure like that. saying, like, uh, um, that uh, uh, personal trainer, like, uh, it happened to me a lot of time that, like, uh, I met someone uh, doing personal training with him, and he said before him, before me, sorry, there was another person that said that. And the thing that he told him was, dude, it was, like, off the charts bad. I don't know why he even told him that. I was like, dude, who do I trust now? Because I know you now, but I knew him before, and he told me that. How do I know that's better? I'm like, dude... 
they're making a job of ruining other people's job just by giving different advices that are mm. definitely not correct and maybe just benefit them in the long term. So you think in that case it's good to generalize on some things? Yes and no. Yes, in the sense of like, you, you look, I think medications are an answer eventually because they obviously give, yeah. give you a solution. But I think most people are getting addicted to the solution because I, they don't I see agree. the purpose. We're talking about the pyramid and we have the scales and we have like, uh, what was the lowest one? The lowest one is uh, environment. So environment, dude. Our environment is convincing us to take medications to That's get true. solutions, man. Um, and, uh, and it's more about like... You and need it to affects our behavior and it affects our uh, skills. And exactly. Everything. Exactly, and our, our, our environment says like, I mean like even my mom and dad and I love them, like if I felt sick, I was like, oh, just take this, this and this pill. It's that simple. And I'm like, no, maybe just ask yourself, maybe your body is not uh, immune enough, maybe you need to increase your immune system, maybe you're not taking enough greens, maybe you're not maybe, taking enough. Maybe you just, maybe this medication will cure you, but the, the, negative, like effect, a patch. the negative effects might be worse than curing it. It's, maybe you just exactly. need to go through it's, the... it's, it's a patch, it's a patch. Yeah. You're not finding the solution to the problem because like for example okay in that situation and some medications are real some medications oh of course are, uh, i mean like yeah of yeah. course they they are all they're all uh, well, i wouldn't say all but like most of them are real yeah and i think uh, each person has something else that works for him some people if you for example want to lose weight some people will go to a paleo some people go will go to ketogenic, yeah, diet. ketogenic diet some people don't need a diet at all and they were able to lose yeah health. i mean like i've lost most of my like like my big results in the past was me just doing a normal diet but just killing it at the gym you know yeah. it's it's another answer just go and destroy it at the gym so there Your are different, gonna different stuff that work and yeah i mean like person need to find what works exactly for exactly I, I recommend be... i recommend to experiment you yeah. have to experiment uh i think even dr phil talked about it uh back in joe rogan's podcast it was like dude you need to experiment as much as you can as a child because the more he says it yeah i mean like i think everybody smart enough will say that because the more you experiment the more you learn it's like you cannot sit and do this you cannot do the same thing and expect different things you know like it's uh this is also the definition of insanity doing the same thing and expecting different results yeah can't do that it's not going to happen if you're going to sit all day do uh in game all day that's what i did and that's why I became depressed back then because I was like, dude, I'm not doing anything different. You so I'm not getting any different get result. You won't get undepressed by, by exactly. playing more Exactly. When did I change? When I started to go to the gym, when I started to make this interaction. But what was more important than that? The why. As soon as I changed my why, I was like, okay, I know why I want to go to the gym. I know why I want to change that. First, it was with coping with my lost girlfriend and like that she left me. And then it was another other stuff. But you need to find the reason of why. As soon as you find yeah. reason of why you want to do something. Like, for example, why you want to be an entrepreneur. You know, like, what is your reason to do it? Gary Vee said it in the best possible way. Gary Vee said, uh, if you don't know what you like and you're depressed about it, just go and try different stuff. Yeah, I, go I agree. Go to the gym, go to, I agree. to martial arts, go to I don't know what. I, I had a lot of hard time uh, in the streaming lately. And like my audience, you know that. Just because I, I played the same thing. And it, it freaked me out because I was like, dude, I'm losing in touch with my audience because I'm not really... Exper I'm not really uh, um, expressing myself as a streamer because i'm playing a game and that game is what everybody likes right now for example it was apex legends right and i love that game but I, at some point i want to be myself too you know like i want to i want to just talk with my audience and every time i don't do that it would be like uh why are you not playing that game yeah so i'm like oh wow i, I can't even express myself and that caused a lot of like uh like uh, bad sensations inside my body and the first thing that i said i was like okay i'm gonna change that Back I'm, and hello, hi, we're here. So just, I, just do what you like. Exactly. So like, I started to do podcasts, and today's the first podcast, and we are here for like one hour and forty-five minutes almost, yeah. which is insane. So, I think actually one hundred, yeah, Ugh. something like that. One one hour, and one hour and thirty-eight minutes, dude. Oh, damn. So yeah. one hour and thirty-eight <laughs> minutes. Um. Man, I got addicted to this game you gave me. Oh my! So I, I, guys, I, I give him, I give him to try uh, uh, Slay the Spire. Oh man! Just amazing game, dude. <laughs> I love it because it's so good, man. It's just generally a good game, dude. I'm yes, really enjoying it. I was it. like, at first, I, I said like. Yeah, yeah, it's I, like me Hearthstone. Too, me too, me too, me too. Then I was like it is finding not, myself playing it for it's one not, hour. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's a rogue light game, a rogue like. Uh, essentially, it's like you survival of the fittest. Like you go more and more, and you have to really think yeah. what is the last. So I think what's so fun about this game is that uh, what you told me the last time I was here, risk and reward, 
So yeah, it's risk and reward. There you go. That, I agree with you. You're, what am I going to get? And you get this awesome thing, and yeah. you're like, yeah, or so, yeah. you lose fifty percent of your. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's like it's uh, yeah. It really. I understand what you mean, man. And, and if you build strong enough, but you can take that for your own life as well, man. Risk yeah. and reward, man. You have to risk some stuff in your life. You have to if do that risk. The most basic thing, if you're not for investing, for example, if you want to invest. You can't expect to, to get return. Yeah, I agree so, with you. And you, I remember you, you, you started investing back in the days in, in stocks. And you said, like, I'm going to lose in advance. You said, like, I'm going to lose that much yeah. and just to learn. Yeah. Uh, how much was it? You know, you recall how much it was? Um, I think that uh, in dollars, 2500 20, 2500 So 2500 yeah. bucks. And that was like the risk that you took. And I want to say, dude, I learned stocks because of you. Like, I remember like, yeah. you just taking that risk. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, he's taking that you risk. You wanted to trade stocks for, uh, for a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was learning that with the virtual uh, um, site you gave me, like yeah. to virtually try and invest, see if I lost anything. I will sure get back to stock trading in the future. Yeah, I, I would love to do that too, man. I, definitely hit me up. But I mean, like, honestly, just I just saw your passion. You know, you say like, I'm risking that much. I was like, damn, okay, if he's really risking that much, He's probably on but something, you know. I'm not special. Like you're looking at it as an. Oh no no! I just when when you bought all this streaming equipment. Yeah. Like you invested. Too, yeah. And you're also investing your time. So this time yeah. worth mon worth money, and I'm sure it worth more than twenty five. No no! I just give you an example because I'm, yeah. I'm like I'm trying to make like a mirror effect, you know, like just yeah. saying something else. I'm like, yeah, that's what I saw in it, and it gave me the inspiration that I needed to do whatever I wanted. And I do, now I do the same thing only with marketing and Facebook ads and all those things. I'm experimenting and I'm investing money in this. But as I invest money, I also see myself learning and seeing what's working and what's not working and learning different skills and tricks like just like when we talked about the neurological levels with actions i learn new skills yeah and with enough skills this is the next level with enough skills you build new values so sometimes people look at all those people selling different courses and saying uh, you can make this much money and this much money and they simply uh, stop believing that you can make money online, for example. Oh, I have a good one for you. Yeah. Like, yeah, but those one. people who sell those courses, maybe some are good, maybe some are bad. But uh, it's not even about that, because most of the people who will see a good course won't make it because they're not willing to lose the money uh, or spend the time or work hard to get it. Because these are the things. And those who do that, they build new values and new beliefs that allow them to believe that it's possible. And once you believe that it's possible enough, it, it will just flow them naturally. And the next step is your identity. And yeah. once you're already a streamer... Yeah, you, you already identify you, yourself as you a don't, streamer. You don't need to believe it's possible. You, you know, you know, it's, you possible. know it's possible. Oh, definitely, you're dude. I'm, I've been fast, like, so many... It's funny because, like, I always have, like, those milestones. Like, for example, reach that amount of money uh, uh, as an income, um, yeah. <clears throat> reaching to the front page. Uh, which I've, good, I've been like, blessed. I've been blessed to be on the front page four times this month. I just finished my last one uh, on last Wednesday. Um, next time, maybe with a podcast. Oh yeah, I actually, I was actually thinking about it while we were talking. You, yeah. uh, I told you I have another voice in my head. The <laughs> the, uh, the auditorial the one. Myself and I. Yeah, no auditorial. Like yeah. the, my auditorial self was like talking and like imagining that. Like, but auditorially, uh, just <laughs> thinking about like, oh, that would be a good idea to just do something like that on the stream on the front page because like uh, uh it gives people really good content i I would love to listen to it after we finish it just listening to it again just seeing what we thought about because it's a it's a, it's a good pack of just information that has been just spelled I, between two people i have know? a practical question yeah can you stream on a few places at the same time essentially no just because i'm partnered with twitch mm, if i will I stream see. on youtube or something else at the same time i will get uh i'll get voided from being partnered I see. just because basically you by being partnered you're committing yourself to be there you know you're going to be the unique person yeah. over there also it's just not beneficial to do that but can you upload it oh of course say so, yeah 24 hours be before, uh, so after 24 hours of the, the the end of that stream you're allowed to stream uh, to uh, upload mm. it so tomorrow more tomorrow like um uh essentially if everything works correctly Tomorrow after the stream, I will be uploading this to YouTube. Because I was thinking uh, to myself, why wouldn't Joe Rogan stream So yeah, that's why. That's in why. YouTube and in Facebook. I, I don't know if you, uh, if he's essentially. Uh, look, first of all, don't spread don't spread too much. It's not smart, yeah, man. I agree, you want but essentially practically you can do it with. 
essentially, yes. I, I don't know in the in the long term if it's more beneficial or not. So you want to build your audience? And Acqu yeah, uh, to one specific pl platform. I mean, like it's good to have um, like Instagram for your pictures, your yeah. Twitter for your tweets, you know, like things like that. But I don't think streaming at YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at the same time will be smart. And Twitch, you know, at the same time. Yeah. First of all, it's insanely heavy on your machine. I don't think you're... I, I mean, I guess you can, but it's yeah. gonna be very heavy. You have something like four computers. So here. I have, I have to have a gaming PC and streaming PC, and even that wouldn't be enough. I would need to upgrade my streaming you PC will, CPU for you that. You would have uh, to need one more PC for every stream, for example? No, not necessarily. If I will upgrade the CPU on that one, I can definitely handle yeah. it. But yeah, yeah. If I get like a good CPU, like a i9 or something, it's, it's gonna be enough. Mm. The GPU wise, I just use the GPU for rendering of the stream for recording, so I upload it to YouTube. But uh, yeah, I which I forgot by the way. Too. I don't really understand the mechanics, but you told me that you have one PC working on the stream. So the gaming the PC, PC, it's yeah. very simple. Like, let me put it straightforward for you. There's the gaming PC and there's the streaming PC. The gaming PC is the game, the, the one that I'm using to play, and then there's a capture card between them. And the capture card is basically passing all the uh, all the visual like uh, video from the gaming PC to the streaming PC that actually processes it mm. and then pass it to, to Twitch. So it doesn't waste too much energy. It doesn't energy waste any energy. energy on it doesn't it. waste any energy on, on anything else than the actual game. Oh, okay. Which is great. Then you don't have any uh, interference with the actual game, so you don't get like low FPS and stuff like that, which mm. is great uh, because the other machine is doing all the rendering and stuff. Um, so uh, what this I want is really to, interesting. That, it is yeah, fantastic, no, and yeah. I want to I want to give a big shout out to Carve Him Up uh, on Twitch. He is the helped person that helped life. me. He helped me build everything, uh, like from actually like connecting yeah, all the that. audio. Man, I look at this place, it's, and it looks like a professional uh, stock. It was it was it was a lot of work, that. man. It was a lot of help from him, and also uh, from Supi on TTV, which helped me like fund the gaming PC, which is an amazing person. Massive shout out! I think he's on the chat. We're gonna talk about Lucid Dreaming. <laughs> we're gonna talk with Lucid Dreaming with him. Okay. So that's gonna be the next one, I think. Uh, I also want to talk with Ori. Or is Sar? Oh, or we'll talk with him 100%. He's yeah. guys. He's you a massive entrepreneur. He is a he's talent. not an entrepreneur. He, he he's, he's entrepreneur in like he, every sense of exactly. the word. Exactly. Like he, he lives. It. He lives it. You he's, see it. He when he talks, you feel it. Yeah, he's a very talented person. I would love to have him on board. He has a lot of information, and uh, I don't know. Maybe he can even connect some more, like more people to talk with. Uh, same with my brother, by the way. My, my brother uh, has a lot of your brother. Your brother, your brother is doing really well on uh, Instagram. Yeah, so he's doing really good, and also he knows a lot of good figures uh, to bring to the stream as well. Mm. So that's that will be. Really I have few of them too, if you want. Yeah, like in the future, we're gonna go with it. Yeah. I just want to see like the after the stream, um, after we finish this, I'm gonna I'm gonna do another stream afterwards. I'm just gonna cut it, uh, set everything the for the stream. gaming. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. put the gaming stream. Probably play some Apex Legends. Uh, which now I'm more hyped about Did because you I played the game you gave me on the stream. No, Slay the Spire didn't. I was I took a three or four days break and on that time I was just grinding the oh, crap out of so, it. So uh, that actually can be a cool idea if you play this game and you let the audience decide which way. So you there go. is an option to do that, but it's not going to be as professional and the game is so like uh, competitive that it's yeah. really hard to actually last long. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really hard game. The yeah. first run I was like I cleared three different floors. But and I thought to myself, like, that's easy, yeah. yeah, that's easy. But I just had luck. I got yeah, 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 yeah. I had three runs after that. And nothing. I, yeah, nothing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, but on the top level, like the people that reach ascension level, which is like the hardest one. How many floors are there? It's not even floors. It's like uh, difficulties levels, like uh, the mm. damage they do and how much HP they have and stuff like that. It's insane. Anyway, uh, what I want to talk with you about, there's something that I got introduced to you like four days ago. It's essentially a new Chromium browser. You know what Chromium is? Chromium is basically a, a, a free, uh, like everybody can use it, everybody can adjust open it. Open source? Open source, there you go. An open, so an open source, like, uh, 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 like the, the ba I don't really know the tech, yeah? But like basically the, the thing that built Chrome. So it's open source. So another company that uh, from the CEO, the past CEO, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong, uh, of Firefox, and one of the scripters from JavaScript uh, connected together and created that new browser, and it's called Brave. That's the name of it. And I'm That's actually using it right name. now. It's right here you see that thing good it's what's, insane what's special about it so first of all if they have uh, a built-in integration for uh for content creators mm -hmm. so essentially if you download this and you watch something on twitch for example most of my audience what can check about this out. all the plugins you have in chrome so know? the thing is it's chromium based so everything that mm -hmm. you have in chrome will pass because i absolutely have some plugins I everything that you have everything that you uh that you have in chrome will pass to brave seamlessly no problem like I absolutely see. no problem 
On top of that, they have a built-in ad block and ad, uh, and built-in ad, uh, ad tracker, sorry, tracker blocker. So both of them are built in the actual browser. So it's way more safe. Uh, so it's a very safe browser. But on top of that, they have something called Tor. So Tor is essentially like, know what you know what Tor is? is? So they have a built-in Tor it's inside like of it. Decentralized, uh, like decentralized. Yeah, internet. it's basically, it's the most, pri no, it's the most private thing ever. It's going through a lot of proxies, so they have no track of who you are mm -hmm. and what you are on the internet, not at all. So like, oh, I was. Uh, yeah, I know what you were talking about. Yeah. It's not that. So it's called Tor. It has like an onion. Yeah, like yeah, onion yeah. I know what I know what it is. This so they have that built-in inside. There, there were that, many stories about uh, darknet and all those. Yeah, things. exactly. So yeah. people use it not only for good yeah, stuff, but essentially it's also used for like your own privacy if you want to research something without being tracked and stuff like that. Uh, which I think is very fair that I've everybody should have that. It's very slow. So it is very slow because it goes all for all the servers to yeah. hide your identity and stuff. But if you need to do something like reading yeah. some content, or if um, you want just want to be anonymous, yeah, if you just want to be anonymous, it's something that they have inside uh, Brave, and you guys can actually check it in chat. It's exclamation mark Brave. Um, I'm using it, and it's actually cool. Is it it's like great. Faster? Uh, it's way faster. It's way more lightweight. Like uh, it doesn't. Oh, this is important, man. Yeah. Sometimes my computer is not. So that new. give it a so shot. Give it a shot. Computer gets. Uh, give it a shot. The thing is, on top of that, there is a referral link. So like they're making a referral system to promote their new uh, new browser. And uh, the way they do it is like they have something called BAT, which is a basic attention token. That's what you call it. And they're, it's on their own currency, which I. Uh, um, I think in the future will like become a cryptocurrency. That's the thing. I think that in the future, that's what they're gonna make out of it. For now, it's not. It's a way to pay the streamer. So essentially, they can tip the streamer with the basic attention token that they're using from just. Uh, the, you have no ads, right? You don't mm -hmm. see any ads, but you can allow to get ads that are specific for you, not according to your location and stuff, just according to what you browsed in. But check it out. It's amazing. It's like a, a higher level of pixel. So like it's essentially uh, according to what you watch. Like let's say you watch Twitch, so it's Twitch related stuff. You know what I mean? I and they give you those ads, and if you watch those ads, you get uh, a basic attention tokens, and those basic attention tokens are actually money you can donate to the streamer. Now uh, the way that it does, it's two ways. First of all, you can actually donate, like tip to the streamer, like a tipping page, and you can redeem it through a place called Uphold, which is like your uh, wallet, digital wallet, and then from there you can put it in your bank account. Uh, and the other way is that through just watching someone, if you have any basic attention token, it will know how much you watch them and it will reward them uh, on a monthly basis. So assuming, let's, let's say 1,000 people are watching me and they all have Brave installed. And even if they haven't done anything relating anything, just, you know, just switch from Chrome to Brave and they're watching my stream through exclamation mark Brave, they actually support me just by watching me through that. I see. This it's is insane. Interesting. This is uh, reminding me of a platform I used to blog on called Steamit. Oh, so Steamit, where, yeah. Yeah. So I don't use it anymore because uh, maybe I will upload blog posts there. Uh, you can check it out. On, oh, yeah, uh, please. Uh, where, 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 can, where can people find you, man? So it's steamit.com uh, slash at P A P S. Uh, P A P S? Yeah. Uh, P A P S. Paps. paps okay paps okay i was like i'm trying to like this, yeah this is this is it basically <laughs> okay but uh, i'm not going to i i think i will change the platform because, so where do you think you go like where you want to go i'm not sure yet maybe for now facebook facebook because, uh uh i did believe in this platform what about twitter like what well, what stops you from twitter it's too small mm. it's too short I don't know, actually, I might, uh, I Twitter, might I think Twitter I might is a wait. really good platform for uh, just... What, what I thought about is doing it in Facebook, maybe Oh, yeah, you, you can spread, you can yeah, spread around. I used to have... Because so, it's a text form, it's not... I'll like... tell you what, man. I was on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, and YouTube at the same time. And, and that and burned me figure, out, man. I will figure out what works. But better. yeah, it definitely gave me the, uh, like, the, essentially like the idea of like, oh, what I like more. If, your if it, Twitter works better than your Facebook. For example, right? Uh, Facebook, I'm I'm done with Facebook. Yeah. Like I'm done with it. I'm using Twitter sometimes. Instagram used to be my main. Now it's Twitch, um, and Twitch is essentially everything. I'm trying to default to YouTube as well now because like not like my main, but as a a good substitute to get some extra views mm. in the long term. So just because like not the full. Uh, stream, no, it's not but... like it's not gonna be where I'm gonna stream. It's gonna be I'm gonna stream over here because I love Twitch. It just I, I you have no idea how Twitch is how how amazing is Twitch. It's just the best. They really care for you as a streamer, which is something that you notice yeah, instantly. Like even not for partners, even just not. They're very. Uh, they're looking for the like. Yeah. Their, uh, they understand. Okay, yeah. they understand that streamers are an actual job, and they really understand it, and they try. They absolutely try best. to make it fair for everyone. Exactly, and they really do. They really do. Uh, it's something that I definitely noticed. Yeah, that's something you told me about. Yeah, and I, I feel it. Like I honestly feel it. Feel it. I mean, like I now I live alone. And it's my own apartment, so you, like you can actually see it. But like uh, you know, like across all the process. 
but honestly i would say that like um twitch is just like a, it's a better platform man it's just a great platform it's it's the first live streaming platform uh, that actually became true you know before youtube before everyone else just copying it just to see because they saw the trend but honestly just a very very like comfortable platform to use when you get used to it and there's so many good people in here man uh, the, like i build my community here so i know like, so you... also this is like the new media we were talking about before like which is something new so uh people who are uh not in our generation like older uh, in their 40s they sometimes they don't understand or even people in our generation our our age they sometimes don't understand what people find so uh attracting in streaming but once you actually watch streamers, you start to, under to understand there's a, a different media. Oh, there's, there's different absolutely, kind of absolutely. The, the things that I see on Twitch live, it's very different than watching the content on YouTube. Just the feeling oh. of knowing it's live and there's and, chat. And really different from TV. Yeah, 100%. Um, I Do agree. you think it will replace, uh, you think TV will die soon? No, no, no. TV is not going to die anytime soon, in my opinion. Do I you think, think eventually it will. Yes, die? yes. I think it's definitely like, like a slowly. Radio. Just because, look, it's like saying like you know, like the CD disc. Have you ever seen like a CD recently? Yeah. No. No I one uses it, right? There's like the. I, I barely see. Uh, uh, yeah, my gaming PC doesn't have it. I think this one, even this one, doesn't have it. Like, we, no one uses it anymore. Yeah, you're right. No one uses it anymore. Like, it it will fade away uh, when also, people I, will forget I, mentioning it. I barely see even the. I would have hard no. Yeah, I know what you're doing. Floppy disk. Floppy disk. I Dude, that that, that even exists? No, I don't. I'm I don't sure. think we will even. They don't create them anymore. That's no, that's for they sure. Don't create I think it's a collectible. No, they, no, they definitely do that. No, actually, I know that all the official programs come with a flash drive. Really? Nowadays? I I am pretty sure. That no, I if think you there's buy discs. Windows in the because, store, I'll tell you why. Because there's still Blu-ray discs, and Blu-ray discs are yeah. very like okay. packed. They're like forty gigs. Maybe this thing, like that, but. I'm pretty sure that if you buy Windows or Photoshop or anything like that, it will come in a free. Dude, I recall Blu-ray when they just came out, dude. Dude, it was so expensive. That was so expensive. That was so expensive. Discs. Dude, I still have it behind you, dude. There you go. Yeah. Oh. It's right here. Yeah. Yeah, but I remember opening a box and have three different discs, like part one, part two, part three, just for dude, the installation. Dude, but it was so... Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. That was a very satisfying feeling, dude. Wow. I miss that. Of like... <clears throat> to have the discs? Yeah, to have the discs. Yeah, I, I get it with books. I like to yeah, you know books. what I mean? So like I'm reading from an ebook. I not an ebook, yeah, I have my Kindle. But uh I, I definitely see why you, you like books as well. It's yeah. a very achievement feeling when you like yeah, finish. I the book. also I like having the book after finishing it. It's yeah, like, yeah, a, it's like a memorabilia. Yeah. I understand you and uh I really miss books as well because I'm using Kindle all the time. I don't mind Kindle, but it's really comfortable, it's, it's way more efficient. Very more efficient. 100 I think Kindle was an amazing investment, and it's also from Amazon, which I think is a fantastic company. Uh, that gives you all the opportunities. So everything just connects. You know? like, yeah. I, I, I love supporting com uh, companies that have a good intention, you know? And Amazon is definitely, is definitely one of those. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really inspiring. Did you start streaming before Amazon? Twitch? I started streaming on Instagram before... No, no, it wasn't before, man. No, that was I, in like I 2000. Gaming, gaming and... guest. No, 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 definitely not. No. I started streaming in 2017, somewhere. Mm, oh, so I started playing PUBG on my laptop and just streaming wow, it. Oh, it's all very recent, but it feels like a long time. Dude, it was less than two years. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very recent. Yeah, like a lot of things happened, dude. I can't, I can't even cope with the fact that I was on the front page four times, man. That's, uh, that's crazy, <laughs> this man. This is really exponential. Dude. Yeah, like I every, definitely... Like that's what I said. Business. No, I agree with you. I, I see myself being way higher on the list in like two, three years. Because right now, I feel like I'm still fighting myself inside of streaming. Do I think most people who start streaming uh, give up on yes. that really fast? Yes, 100%. Yes. Like, how much time do they survive? A month, too. A month, too? I, from, just from what I'm seeing, yeah. Maybe some people are really crazy I, I, lately. I see it I see it in I would everywhere. say, I, I would say every person, every person, every person, trading. every person that would go for a year or more constantly, like, without stopping, will stay. Yeah. I really believe in that. Because, you know what? There's uh, this fear of, not, of giving up, you know? It's like giving up. Imagine, like, me, just, I have been committing for working out for, like, um... Uh, six years yeah six years now almost six years and i'm like dude after six years i cannot go even if i will be absolutely smashed and i'm talking about like smashed uh, i i feel bad i don't feel i feel like sick you i feel like go. i will still go to the gym because I, there's no way i'm gonna give that up like there's no even like this talk 
anymore, yeah, you know? I totally get it. So the more you commit to something, it's going to be easier for you to and cope with it's it. It's easier with the momentum. Like yeah. sometimes you uh, break the momentum a little bit. And it's much harder to yeah. get back. Oh, dude, after yesterday, I came back after three and a half days of not streaming. After, uh, after streaming for like one year and a half, right? And it wasn't like a vacation. I just stopped streaming and did my own thing, just not streaming. And I was like, dude, it's so hard for me. I, it was very hard for me to go back. Like I felt really bad. Like yesterday, like, I don't know who was watching me yesterday, but I was, I, I was, I was bad. I, I felt bad. I felt like really bad. I felt like uh, something's not, not okay. Do I think you need to make changes? In order oh, to definitely. So I already did. So like Tuesday and Fridays are my days off, and those are like one days at a time, not like a three days, you know. But when you started uh, streaming, you uh, plan that you will one no, day, one no, day no, you will no. slow down or mm -mm -mm -mm. no i i intended to go for full-time job from the start every day but you streaming did more than full-time job you oh did. dude hell yeah like if you're gonna ask me at the very start of my streaming career like before i got partnered in the first uh half a year before i got partnered i got it partnered very early on that's because i had a very deep vision man uh of getting partnered and yeah, a lot of support a lot of support from Stas studios which is the developers of fan of forces uh, they gave me a lot of shout outs and they really helped because they saw my vision too. But um, I mean, like I, I was streaming, I want to say like 50 hours a week, even more. I was like doing a, 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 a every day streaming like seven hours plus. Do you th I, I think that right now, if you take those breaks you decided to do, I think you will be more productive. Than oh, like for sure. And I definitely see like, for example, that yes, they, the stream didn't go that well. But it didn't demotivate me. It it was like, okay, that happened. You understand why it happened. That's okay. Let's continue forward. You know, I don't punish myself too much anymore. Like I'm done with that. I understand that things. Like I I I'm gonna say like out of the front page, I had four of those. I think like maybe two of them was actually good, and two of them was something that I definitely need to change and evolve. And um and it's okay. You know, like you you cannot punish yourself because punishing yourself is like I you, think you should never punish yourself, but you should be. Uh, you should be really self-reflective. Like, if something don't work, you do need to change something. Yeah. But that doesn't mean to give up. Like, people don't understand that. If you are going to open a business or be an entrepreneur or start streaming or it doesn't matter what, I, I would say that most likely you will fail at the beginning and you need to be ready for that. You need yeah. to... You need to like Gary V saying, "I love failing." Yeah, that's I, I see what you mean. You need, but not giving up. up. Not giving up. Exactly. Make Agreed. changes. Sometimes you need to give some parts up for in yeah. order to I, make I, the big I, why. I, I do it right now. That's what we're doing. Yeah. That's why we're doing a podcast because I realized that I am losing part of my expressions of myself by but just that, gaming. That doesn't mean you give up. That means no, no. I definitely gave changes. up. I'll explain to you why I gave up. I gave up on the on the sense of just uh, I wanted to really commit to one day every day streaming, and uh, it was really hard for me to not do that. Uh, uh, other than you know vacations and so stuff like that of, you feel like a part of you died uh, that's what I thought it would be like and I understand that it's healthier for everybody involved you know because first of all not everybody sees me every day so there is more chance for them to be hyped about seeing me and on top of that I feel like my content is getting better because I'm not rushing to do another content for tomorrow I yeah. can actually think and maybe collaborate with someone and have some more time to uh, to do other stuff at the same time and maybe get some different ideas because uh, we talked about it before that if you do every day the same thing nothing's gonna change and I did every day streaming and, and there was it worked, no but at it, some it extent to for, some extent for a certain for a certain goal to, to some extent too man it was yeah. some extent like I felt like I'm not generating as much uh, 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 interest in my stream as I want to, just because my audience just saw that it's repeated over and over again, and there's no. It was necessary to do that. Oh, one hundred percent. I I think it's definitely is, and like just being you with with you here and doing this podcast for like more than two hours now. Um, I mean, it yeah. gives the idea, dude. Yeah. Man. Um. We're all right. So uh, uh, we are gonna do uh, another session at some point, man. It was yeah. two hours. One hundred percent. That was fantastic, man. I wanna I wanna thank you, man. It yeah, was, I was.